The longest of the elite time trials this week is the men's race. 47.8 kilometers. The Sterling Circuit and intermediate time checks at three occasions. They'll be back along the straight road. Gargunuk into the hills in the last 10 k's or so will tell us a lot. We're all ready to go. And the first rider is on the start ramp. Riding for the refugee team. It's Wais Ahmad Bathreddin. Head down, time to do the job. Gets his countdown, a long doubt in the saddle ahead. He'll be hoping to hit those time checks as quickly as possible. That's where we're heading. Sterling Castle looking a picture. They start down the bottom. And it's an interesting course, lots of straights at the start, Brian. It gets very interesting in the last 10 to 15 k's, doesn't it? Yeah, I think that's where it's going to make a difference. It's, it's made a difference in pretty much uh, all the time trials we've had here. You know, we're straight into a kind of west-southwesterly, so predominantly kind of headwind, kind of long straight road, so towards, you know, the, the turn that we've seen pretty much in all the time trials, you turn right towards Blair Drummond. Then this time we go all the way out to Thornhill. We add that kind of drag at Kippen and to the other drags in the way in, Gun Gunnock, um, Canvas Barren, and then the very difficult kind of cobbled section up towards the, the finish here. So it's a real powerhouse. It's keeping the power down. It's not, a, it's not really, really technical, Rob. So there's not none of that kind of easing back in the corners, trying to get your breath. It's full on the whole way. And to be honest with you, this sort of course, big powerhouse, he's the strongest he's going to win. Well, the aero advantages in that long straight to start will be interesting as well. Here's Aidan Butigig, racing for Malta, born in Australia. Both the Maltese representatives, Australian born this year. And here they go. Rocky, one of the top cycling kits, I know that. Right is going off today at one minute. 20 second intervals and that's maintained right the way through no larger gaps for riders at the end as you might see in a grand tour big stage race and we're back with Weiss refugee cycling team have been training at the World Cycling Centre in Switzerland And looking solid to start off, Brian. Yeah, a lot of them will. It's just about getting into that rhythm right from the start, getting the, the power up. And, you know, looking back to the, the men's under-23, Malese, who surprised a lot, uh, even as in the commentary booth. It was that effort right from the start. OK, it was a little bit shorter, but it's that effort right from the start, getting into your rhythm, and that's so important. You know, obviously, aerodynamics come into it with the wind blowing the long straights, but... Yeah, it's a, a longish time trial, not the, mo not the most difficult, but hard enough for most. Our third rider today comes from Guam, Edward Oingerang. It's a nice, long, straight downhill to start down that ramp. There's time to take a breath, get settled into the position and then put on the power. Wangarang settling in. You have riders today are going to be on a one by as well. You can see there's a more traditional gear set up for Guam's Ongarang. And this is where they're heading. Sterling, a wonderful place in Scotland, Brian. Definitely. Um, spent four years, lived here. Uh, this roundabout here is where we started. And it's nice to see so many people at the start here. A lot of those um, at the start will be able to kind of walk probably about kilometre, kilometre and a half into Stirling. They might not get up the climb, but definitely at the bottom of the climb because I believe it's packed. This is Renato Suarez, races for Cape Verde. Atlantic Islands, Portuguese speaking. 
and racing here on a road bike. It's going to make those long straights even tougher, isn't it? That's huge, huge difference between a, a time trial bike and some of the bikes that we've got at the moment. I was talking to a professor of the um, West of Scotland University, and you know he's riding an, an old school bike with clip-on bars, and you know he was just telling me that the difference is absolutely huge uh, between the time trial bikes. And but then again, uh, Rob, we, we talk about it just actually being here, being on our TV screens, being broadcasted throughout the world. Just being here is a, a tribute in itself for some of these riders. He's been to a few of these big competitions. Renato Suarez is 44 years of age. He's the second oldest rider in these championships. The oldest to come later from Ghana. The veteran of the scene, Christopher Simons, at 49 years of age. And he'll turn 50 this year. What an achievement just to be at the Worlds. Afghanistan's Ahmad Mirazai took place and took part, I should say, in the mixed relay the other day. I mean, as I, not a professional, he's from the uh, refugee contingent, but representing Afghanistan. Based in Europe nowadays. And she looked down to the early big name. Ryan Mullen. And I think looking at what's to come, he'll be looking to set the fastest times early on. And if there's a course design, this this will suit Ryan. Um, if you remember, he was top six. I think he was fifth, was he? Not way back in Qatar in the world's time trial. And you know, obviously that was pretty much flat as a pancake. And he's a big powerhouse, so this will suit him. Okay, there's a an added lump uh, at Kippen. Um, you know, kind of rolling towards the finish, but predominantly on these sort of roads, Ryan, I think, will be aiming potentially for the top ten here. Welcome back to your television viewers, as you're about to see the oldest of the riders in today's time trial. A veteran of the scene, representing Ghana at 49 years of age, Christopher Simons. Simon's born in London. Been around the scene for a long time. And again, what an achievement. 49 years of age. He'll be 50 this year and representing Ghana at the World Championships. Turning up against the likes of Josh Tarling, who was winning the juniors last year. And look at that. What a difference. And well, Robert the Bruce. And Edward's army back, didn't he? To have a think yep. again. I remember. I can remember the date of this battle, Battle of Bannockburn, purely because um, there's a pub nearby, and it's called 1314. Somebody he might have drank a jar or two in his <laughs> honour. Then here's another of the veterans. We mentioned this gentleman earlier on in the week, watching the mixed relay. Murjan Khalmuratov. Whenever I've turned up to commentate on an Olympics and Asian Games, a World Championships, this man has been a constant, representing Uzbekistan at every turn. And here he is still doing it, 41 years of age. Had a long career. Former winner of the Tour of China. And stages in Thailand as well. He's been the Asian champion in this discipline, but that the last time was a decade ago. An 11 time national champion of Uzbekistan. Not always ridden at continental level, third division in cycling for various different teams, mainly based in China. They're now back at home racing in Tashkent, the capital of his nation. For those of you that are my age, you might remain, remember Abdu Japarov, the Tashkent. The Tashkent Terror. There you go. Terror. Yes. 
rolling down the Champs Elysees in the Tour de France. Yeah, he's he's still around. I don't know. He's he's still involved with cycling, I believe. But uh, yeah, Tashkent Kid. I remember racing with him when he was with Russia. But um, what a powerhouse he was. Five, four, three, two, Here's uh, Su Haoyu racing for China. They're producing some good track riders. It's just, you know, they've got a decent enough road scene in the different provinces and things like that. But it's a massive country, um, you know, big economy and things like that. It's, it's only time will tell whether we see them, you know, in the pro peloton in, in Europe. Races for China Glory, which is probably the biggest China, Chinese domestic team at the moment. They've had some star Italian riders in the last couple of years as well. As so we're back with Afghanistan's Ahmad. Mirazé. Weather changing slightly, isn't it? It was a nice, clear, sunny morning earlier on. Clouded over a little bit, but the sun still managing to peek through those clouds. 20 degrees today. Probably couldn't get much more of a better temperature for, for bike racing. No, it's good. Um, you know, I'm really, you know, proud that the championships are here and, you know, we're seeing Scotland in its glory. You know, you can see people at the sides, you know, a lot of the riders, short sleeves and things like that. So, you know, that says it all. A man from Mauritius in short sleeves. Five, four, three, two, one, go. And here is uh, Alexandre Maillet. Next up will be Ryan Mullen, first man to watch, man who almost took a rainbow jersey in the youth categories. Fraction of a second it was that denied him. And he's going to be the first serious big name rider to watch. Of course, there's no shortage of experience in riders who've just gone. Starting with this man, Kalmur who we were just talking about from Uzbekistan. Actually, looking at a lot of these roads, Rob, um, as you see Ryan Mullen, just full of concentration in the, uh, the start ramp here. And as you mentioned, you know, he'll be looking for a good performance here. When I started, I took about two or three years break from cycling uh, when I retired and then came back. And this was a place, these are the roads that I retired on. They never had a chain gang, but along these time trial roads, I set up a new ch time, a chain gang in this area. Ryan Mullen was a fraction of a second away from the rainbow jersey in the under-23 worlds in Ponferrada nine years ago. He's since finished in the top five in the elite. And here he is looking for a similar performance representing Ireland. He's a mightily strong rider. And Ryan Mullen is on his way for Ireland. Mullen's current trade teammate, Niels Pollitt, is approaching his start time. He's moving on at the end of the season, though. Another of the riders snapped up by UAE Emirates, who Seem to be extremely busy in the transfer market. Again, I think it's more for what he can do. Um, you know, they're just looking not just for, you know, the Grand Tours. You know, we can see what, um, you know, Teddy Pogacar does in the, uh, you know, the classics. Is he going to go for other classics? Is he building that kind of classic team? We'll have to wait and see. But, um, yeah, a lot of movement uh, at the moment. Felix Ritzinger is next. Two, one, go. No spoilers, but Austria did take a medal yesterday in the women's elite time trial. And mind if you'd like to watch how that unfolded and see what kind of medal it was, check out Discovery Plus and GCN Plus. All of the races available on demand. It's safe to say that Ritzinger is a solid time trialist, but he isn't the favourite here. No, not at all. Um, you see the Austrian flag flying. Well, that, that's what you know. I was, I was seeing when I was driving up. Um, I'm in Spain now, uh, like Europe. But when I was driving up, um, seems like an eternity ago, a couple of weeks ago, and 
I was seeing all these nationalities with bikes and you know the caravans and things like that and it was just a bit of nostalgia um, for me driving up you don't often see it so there's a lot of cycling coming to a lot of cycling fans coming to Scotland and it's, it's great to see and you know there's been a few people have got in contact tell me where they're staying where they're riding round and absolutely loving it it's so lucky with the weather um, the wind isn't blowing that much it's, as we say it's up to about 20 kilometers hour. not too much um, to destroy anybody here but yeah, it's just so nice to see so many foreigners have come here, driven here, and um, are staying here for the whole championships. It's already a day of celebration for Nicholas Sukowski. This morning, his team announced that he signed a brand new deal to stay with the Q36.5 team for the next couple of years. Here he represents his nation. He's the current Canadian road champion. Here he is in the time trial, trying to do what he can. And as you can see from these flags, it's still a headwind start. It actually said it's cracking the flags in Scotland today. It's nice, it could have been so much worse. I was talking about the other day there how this that kind of southwesterly or westerly wind can really, you know, kill the start of your ride. Um, it is about pacing yourself, obviously, over this distance. Um, I wouldn't save too much back because these kind of drags aren't, aren't too bad, but majorities right the riders have already looked at this course once or twice so they will know it um the kipping flats here very very um straight but they're hugging the left trying to get as much shelter as possible i hope ben healy's got his discovery plus or gcm plus on there to watch his teammate well, I'm actually watching Mechanic, who's from Paisley, just up the road from me, watching Dooley Cycles. He used to go to the same school as me, uh, Graham Hurt. Here's Ryan Gibbons, first of the South African representatives. <laughs> yeah, just mentioning that, that was a, a problem for a lot of the, the teams. Um, because there's different disciplines going on at the same time, it was, you know, to split your staff members from Swan Ewers, uh, Masseurs and Masseuses and, you know, mechanics and things like that. And, you know, a lot of the, the countries were, were asking for local help um, purely because they couldn't get, you know, to every discipline uh, and they have to support as much as they can. So, you know, Graham Herd, former team manager of the Scottish national team, is what he's been a mechanic pretty much a lot of his career. Good bike rider in his time for the Johnston Wheelers. My club grew up with, with me, of course, and... Yeah, nice to see him. Uh, every now and again, I pop into Dooley Cycles and he's there in the workshop working away and now working with Ireland with, dare I say it, one of the top bike riders in the world these days. This Ben Haley is another man who has extended his deal. After a sensational Giro d'Italia Grand Tour debut and top spring as well. Jacobo Truba, representing Czechia. Ready and settling in. As we are back on a course now. It's like Oingerang. From Guam. 15 minutes into the effort. Settled in. It's about now that we're going to, I think, turn our attention to the intermediate checks. We just had the first rider through, and that was uh, Ahmad Badreddin Weiss of the refugee team. 17 minutes 12, Brian. Yeah, first kind of benchmark, I think. You know, we said it right from the start, a lot of these riders here for the experience, and, you know, listening to a lot of the top riders, as I said, you know, Glasgow, one of the most friendly cities in the world, so... And then around this area, a lot of um, mixed countries joining in and having some fun. The next of the big names at the start today will be looking for those benchmark times alongside Ryan Mullen should be this man, Niels Pollitt. Not always the best in terms of time trial results, but he's a strong rider, and if there was a course to suit him, it was this, wasn't it? Yeah, definitely, well, you would think that. You know, kind of flat out to the first turn. A little bit of crosswind over to Blair Drummond. 
Then when you turn left, it starts to kind of start to get, you know, a little bit more undulating to, to Thornhill. You kind of climb into Thornhill. You've got a tricky wee descent <coughs> out of Thornhill, and then it's flat again, pretty much uh, all the way towards Kippen. Then you take that loop in. And you've got, it just adds to the under 23, you add the kind of kip and drag up, then you get Gorgona, Canvas, Barron, and then that very difficult climb towards the finish. So it, it's a time trial, definitely of two halves. Ahmad Mirazai is going very well. He's over got past uh, his minute man. A minute and 20 second man, Renato Suarez. Suarez, I said, one of the veterans, but Suarez. Just gaining a minute back on him, yeah? <laughs> I was just thinking, Rob, there, that uh, time trialling can be a very lonely place, but they've got company for each other. <laughs> and this is helping Ryan Mullen as well. He's catching his... Wow. The thing is here, you've got a VIP car in here, but where can a VIP car go? Where can this car go with the cones on the left-hand side? That has to pull well. onto the grass. And you can hear he's been told to do so. Ryan Mullen well, will use this all day long. He he will sit behind that all day. He was probably just easing back a little bit, but yeah, maybe not the best. But uh, I think they got the message and the, the horn meant get onto the grass. But in that stage, Rob, there wasn't a lot of room to move unless you moved onto the grass there. So yeah, but Ryan Mullen all day long would have taken that little bit of benefit. Here back with Sue. Just under 40 k's to go. Not yet 10 kilometers into his effort. Head movement there, up and down, as we're with Mullen again, left-hand side. So now at the start order, Mullen already ahead of the man who started a minute and 20 seconds in front of him. And that's the difference. You've got professional <laughs> semi-pros and very, very talented amateurs here. It's a real mix, and you're seeing that on the screen as well. He's doing the right thing, isn't he? He's moving to the left-hand side. That's all he can do. Um... The other rider was to the left, he was to the right, and you know, you have to, if you get past, you kind of have to kind of drop back and keep out the slipstream of the rider. Although we see in many of the top events throughout the world, riders do flaunt it, but um, yeah, nice to know that they know the rules. Update from the first time check Aidan uh, Butigig of Malta is now the fastest rider. It's taken 10 and a half seconds out of Weiss. Weiss, the rider from Syria representing the refugee team has taken part in quite a few world championships he's a name we know well a very solid rider back with Mullen I think we'll be following Ryan Mullen for quite a while won't we here he is the first big reference point summer scene behind him and representing Astana Kazakhstan it's Harold Dejada he's had a decent season hasn't he? he's been aggressive this year whenever he's raced good rider especially when the road goes uphill um, not too sure this time travel suit him I think we were talking the other day it's been a while since we've had a kind of top top um, medalist from Colombia in this discipline Botero you know, many, many years ago. Of course, we see many riders at the top level, Rigoberto Oran um, and Bernal as well. When it comes to time trials, you know, just looking at this this start sheet, you know, I, I just wish that someone like Jonas Vingigo would not just, you know, stop racing straight after the tour. That's why I love Taddy Bacaccia. He's here, he's loving it, he's getting involved. Great meadow in the road race, coming here to the time trial. And, you know, I just wish that Vingigo would have kind of blessed Scotland and his World Championships with his presence at some point, and that to me is a big shame. I'm a fan of Danish cycling. One of the managers here is a friend of mine, uh, uh, Brian Bistrup. I rode with him many, many years ago at ACBB, but I know he may be listening. I was trying to go and see him, but I not only had a limited amount of days at the Grand Fondo and then I was heading south, but that's the only thing for me. I want to, at the World Championships, I want to see the best riders. And the fans have come throughout the world, and I would have loved to have seen Vingigo in this uh, competition today. 
Well, Jonas Vingero taking a little bit of time off, but of course we'll now be back in training, getting ready for the Vuelta a España. Off he's going to go there with Primoz Roglic, who doesn't take part today either. Gerard Thomas, who's targeting the Vuelta, is here. Of course, you can possibly suggest that it's, of course, a home world championships, isn't it, for him? So that's uh, probably the reason why he's decided to take part. He obviously feels he can do something. I think it's just a test as well. For you know, in the world, he's been finishing a top ten in the time trial. He's been there and thereabouts. But why not take advantage? You know, as you say, this is home. You know, Welshman coming up to Scotland, and you know, I, I love the way that you know Gerard gets involved. He, he does most of the championships, even the British championships. So. You know, why not come up here? And I see that his wife is here, probably his, his, his kids are here, you know, racing uh, in, a, in a World Championships in, in Scotland. OK, they get the, the opportunity to do it in Britain before with the uh, Yorkshire, but it's not going to come around all the time in your career. So why not take advantage? Here's the second rider from the refugee cycling team. One, go. This is Amir Arslan Ansari clipping in a bit of a rush there to be ready for the exact start time but he's away he settles in and straight away looks like he means business i just love that starter again it's the authority in her voice when she says go okay well i just noticed also in the start sheet we saw it the other day um that there's a lot a lot of the you know the Italian riders in Malaysia won it in under twenty three and it was separated and a lot of times in these time trials that you've got one team looking after two riders. So you've set a, a rider off first phase and then you've got a second phase. But here there's not a great deal of difference between the Belgians, Evnipol and Walt Van Aert. Um so that suggests to me that they've got two teams here. One team looking after Evnipol and one team looking after uh, Wolf Van Aert. And I say one team, I'm talking about they'll probably be designated a sports director, um, a Swan Ewer, and, uh, of course, a mechanic each. We just saw Ansari start. And here's Musi Shabangu. Represents Eswatini. What many people in the world will know, formally know, as Swaziland. I was just about to say that, but uh, thanks for that update. I wouldn't have known that. Landlocked country in Africa between South Africa and Mozambique. We're with Niels Pollitt here. Ansari, who just started a minute ago, is a, a really interesting rider, of course. He is of uh, Afghan birth, but has been resident as a refugee in Sweden for quite a while. He's been competing in the Swedish Nationals. He's a very good semi-pro rider. He's been top ten in the Nationals there before. He's done a lot of racing this year in the third division over in Poland and throughout Scandinavia as well. A rider to watch in these early riders who are off. Weiss there in fifth and the intermediate. You can see that Mullen's the quickest so far. Yeah, after 12.6, yeah. It's a considerable margin, but we expected that anyway, that uh, the Irishman um, would be, you know, trying to get the best result possible. Nothing against, you know, a lot of the early starters, maybe not the, the fastest of guys. So, you know, Ryan setting a good time. And here's Daniel Bonello. Made his Maltese debut last year. He's of Australian birth. It's a special one last year, able to ride the worlds in the country of his birth, representing the nation of his heritage. And here he is again, riding for Malta. There's Stirling Castle. And that's where we're riding. All the history with James V and Mary, Queen of Scots. go there and tour and learn all about the history. As you can see, historically, the key to the balance of power in Scotland. 
back to the start ramp just down the hill from that castle. And this is Bangura Abdullahi. Representing Guinea. And in a, another difference, we've had time trial bikes, we've had road bikes. This is somewhere in between. This is the road bike with the clip on bars. Yep, definitely a road bike with the clip on bars. That's how a lot of um, a lot of us started pretty much um, when it came into time trial. And if you can cast your mind back to Greg Lamont um, in the Tour de France, which he, which he won uh, against Fignon by eight seconds, you know, the time trial from Versailles into uh, Trevor, uh, an old um, acquaintance, a, a coach from MTN Quebec days. But yeah, um, we've cast our mind back to then, you know, it all kind of started time trial and Greg Lamont, clip on bars and it's come a long way, but still, a lot of these kind of smaller nations, they don't have the kind of big budgets to have, you know, dedicated uh, time trial bikes. So he has to suffice with the uh, the clip-on bikes. This is Jacob Jones, the second of the two representatives of Guam. We've had an update from the first time check, and somebody has got managed to get close to Ryan Mullen. Not close enough, but it's Nicholas Sukowski, 17.02 seconds behind the Irish. Jones on his way, and look at that. I'd started to wonder in the last 20 minutes or so, just looking at the pictures, whether there might be a shower on the way. Did you see those spots of rain on the camera there, Brian? You, you're talking about an event in Scotland. I don't see any rain. No rain's <laughs> going to come, Rob. Come on. Well, it's sunny here, so it might be a perfect afternoon because you've got sunshine, a bit of rain, and we'll have a rainbow by the end of it. There you go. Yeah, no, that was you called it in the, the men's elite race when that rain broke came over. It was a perfect shot um, in Glasgow when it came over. Brilliant. But, yeah, uh, just getting back to that first time check, Ryan Gibbons comes through in a 15.04, so only about five seconds down on uh, Ryan Mullen. That's a sensational start to the ride from the South African. A second of the two Cape Verdeans. This is William Gormish. Beautiful set of islands in the Atlantic. And Gormish on a road bike looks like a really powerful rider. I think he's riding the wrong discipline. <laughs> he should be a track sprinter. Oof. He looks so powerful, doesn't he? I'd maybe get him in the kilo on the track. There's a suggestion that Jeffrey Hoagland might be aiming to try and break the uh, world record in the killer, one that stood for a long, long time, François Pervis. Maybe a trip to Mexico is on hand at Aguas Calientes. I've heard that Hoagland is ready to try and raise some funding. He, of course, is the world champion in that discipline. Yeah, I remember uh, Chris Hoy going over to Bolivia to do it as well. Um, that's what they were trying to do. and. Yeah, these kind of small, we, we, we kind of concentrate on the hour record, don't we, uh, nowadays? Maybe 30 year, years ago not, but it seems to be, you know, everything. everybody wants to, to go for that. Maybe not now, after what Ghana did. Hassani Hennis in the breakaway in the World Championship road race. And here's the man from Anguilla in the time trial. Calm start. We saw lasting a long time in that little move just off the peloton the other day. Strong rider. He's a good criterion rider over in the United States scene. A 
racing for the Caribbean nation, Anguilla. Now, Niels Pollitt has just come through that first time check, 3.2 seconds down. It's tasty, isn't it, between the top three already? Yeah, definitely. We've got a bit of a fight within Bora Hansgrohe, uh, two teammates. Let's see what this second time check um, brings, but it will start to kind of rise up. You know, that to that first check at 12.6, it is flat as a pancake. Second of the two riders representing Afghanistan here. And this is uh, Kais Haidari. Raced the other day in the mixed relay. It's an historic day for Afghanistan with their women taking part and the men together as well. Certainly with all it means with sport for women being banned back in Afghanistan. Just look at that view, Rob. There's some clouds there. They don't look as if they're, they're holding any moisture, I think, for the next few hours. I don't think we're going to see any rain at all. I'm quite a professional looking out the window in Scotland and determining what I have to take with me that day. You're a rain professional, are you? Well, I had to be. <laughs> <laughs> You're talking to a man who was born in Accrington, Brian. I mean, <laughs> there's a reason I left. <laughs> it was to avoid those dark clouds and the stuff that fell from it. Yes, plenty of experience, Brian. I will not go against that. South Africa and Panama readying their riders. Back to the rider who has to be ready straight away. Second, Garnen. And this is Henry Tete Jangma. Back onto the course with Guinness uh, Abdullahi. And we have a new fastest time, Rob. The Norwegian at the first time check. Ivor Johan Notten, 14.48. One of the riders that we didn't manage to see start, actually. Here we go. I told you about this I, the other day. You did, you did, and I, I wasn't sure whether, but I thought you might be having me on. <laughs> then again, we've got one in Knowlesley near Liverpool, so why not have one in Blair Drummond? Yeah, this back, so I, I came here as a, a child. Wasn't that far, probably 45 minutes to an hour from, from Glasgow to see giraffes and t uh, lions. I'm not too sure what they have there, but yeah, it's. But you live so far away from these sort of animals, animals, then they're just up the road. They play a drum and safari park. There's an update from the intermediate that you were just bringing us. Graphically, bottom right and corner. 28 seconds between first and fifth at the minute. Back to the start. I'm representing Qatar. It's Fadil Al Qatar. Just waiting to get that first turn in front of the car out the way. On the straight to settle into the skis. It's a long time in those skis at the start. Some long straights against the wind to begin this 48 kilometre time trial. And 47.8 to be exact. Elevation game, well, 352 metres to climb, but most of it coming towards the end. Here is Henry Tete Jangma. Here's Charles Kagimu. Experienced rider from Uganda. Rider we've seen on our screens before at the World Championships. He's 24 now from the national capital. Been riding at a decent level, isn't he? Continental rider for the bike aid team in Germany. He is the African champion. Keep your eyes on this man. A serious time trialist.
Asani Hennis, who hails from the Criterion scene. And there he is, catching and passing the rider from Cape Verde. William Gormish, he's looking behind and well, a long, long way to ride. Got a fly fishing. You need to have patience, trust and believe in the methods, don't you, down there to do that. Same in time trialling, although uh, as they're flying past Dune Castle. They're ready to go at the start Five, again. Settles into it straight away. Dorel Christopher Jr. <laughs> Kais Haidari. solid enough but we must remind you that the riders coming later on beneficiaries of wind tunnels the top gear many of them with post tour de france legs there's such a, a difference in not just ability but support as well and there's a radio problem here for the afghanistan rider that's not ideal you want those references the way you go through because like everybody brian will be riding to a plan he will be. Um, some riders uh, like it, some riders don't. This is 26 year old Andreas Militiaris from Cyprus. Racing for Kiwi Atlantico Cabo de Peñas right now. It's his day job. Winner of stage in the Tour of Rhodes before. He's a nine time champion of Cyprus. Nobody else has won the national time trial since 2014. <laughs> Waiting for our first riders to reach the second intermediate check. Plenty of riders still waiting to start. And there's Derek G, the star of the month of May for many. Giro d'Italia superstar. Derek G almost was the order of the day, wasn't it? Now a household name. Here's Ingvar Umarsson from Iceland. Spots of rain that briefly appeared have disappeared. Mr. Smith was right. Should never have doubted him. <laughs> the rider from Iceland must be quite strong. I know in north of Scotland we got a lot of riders coming over from the likes of Shetland and Orkney and that, and it's windy up there, very exposed, and it's the same in Iceland. Love to see a stage race in Iceland. Scenery would be absolutely stunning. If you're into, um, I think it was on a matter a couple of weeks ago, um, one of the bike manufacturers, the, the, the fort manufacturers up there, Lauf, had their own um, gravel bike event. Uh, quite a few of the kind of ex pros going up there for it. Beautiful scenery. Five, four, in Uzbekistan, it's Fomovsky the next to represent them. Second of the two entrants. Oh, 
and the Central Asian riders on his way. Formovsky, a 22-year-old, a former national champion in this discipline. I wonder where this is, Rob. We saw this this morning in the junior race, and believe it or not, there was a foursome on the tee. I couldn't believe that they were playing golf on a day like this when the Worlds was on. And I'm a, I don't mind a round of golf, but yeah, Scotland, you can play any time. I get asked that all the question. Uh, every time people know that Scott, do you play golf? No, never played. I've played a couple of rounds, in fact. My lad, I was up in Scotland and uh, I had to steal some of my brother's um, golf clubs because my young lad is getting into it. So I'm spending a bit of time at a driving range now and again. Yeah, it's good fun. It's all about the bikes here, the power of the bike in Scotland at the World Championships. And from a real cycling nation here, Mohamed Ganj Khanloup representing Iran. And so there's some big stage racing in Iran, isn't there? It's not normally about the time trialling. It's normally about the climbing and the big mountains. Iran is historically a big cycling country. Might be on a road bike there, and I think time trialling not normally the thing, but he's the former Asian champion on the road, this man. He can ride a bike. Fadel al Qatar is the rider you can see just out in front. He's passed his one minute 20 man. That's Henry Tete Jangma. Could you just help with this? this and uh, uh, Ryan Mullen's going well. And here's his teammate, Ben Healy. Former Irish champion. Lost the jersey this summer, though, to Mullen. From Argentina, Juan Pablo Dotti. Only one of the representatives from Argentina. He's a former national champion. He's 39 now. You might have seen him the last few years on your screens racing the Vuelta San Juan. Been a strong domestic rider for quite a while now. This is the update from the first intermediate. Tejada. Continuing that strong form and not naturally a time trial is certainly not on the flat, but he's putting in a solid performance at 22 seconds down there. Well, I think I said that this is a wee bit too flat for him, and you know, in the flattest part of the, the course to the 12.6 kilometer point, he's, he's riding reasonably well, but you know, there's a lot of strong, strong uh, riders, specialists in this uh, time trial yet to come. Vitaly Novakovsky racing for Ukraine. The next rider down the ramp, and he's off and on the way. Just approaching 10 past three local time. In the next hour, everybody will be on the road. We go to our second intermediate check, and the first rider across is Weiss Ahmad Bathareddin. I said earlier on, Racing for the refugee team, but a man we've seen last few years racing in the Worlds from Syria. And a very solid rider. He's racing and riding over in Lyon in France at the moment. Semi-professional rider. Screens ready to go. Please don't catch me. John, John. 
Not sure. Xue Ming, second of the two Chinese riders in action. Most riders trying to get focused and in the zone for these time trials, but that was a nice moment there from Tom, Tom Squinch. He did a tremendous ride in the road race to Ben Healy. Ben Healy starts a minute and 20 in front of him. He just said to him, as you do, so you're going to wait for me then? 80 seconds between each rider here. Look at that architecture at the top. Sort of Gothic star. The National Wallace Monument. I get told off years. the other day, Rob, oh, for you? not telling what? everybody where to go. Well, most of the bike rides I did, um, I didn't really stop too much, but. There's a cafe at the bottom of this one called Corey Aries. A couple of jerseys up there, um, memorabilia. So go in there if you're looking for a, a nice Italian coffee and watch the racing at the same time. Five, four, Representing Serbia here, it's Ongjen Ilic. Look at that, a... That's the fashion, isn't it, in terms of time trial positioning? The low base bars, the very high skis, and then the head meeting the wrist and hands right in the middle. Back with Alcatar here. As we are racing around Sterling in the individual men's elite world time trial championship. Derek G is ready. There's a whole host of riders ready. What do you think his chances are of finishing second, Rob? <laughs> You're a cruel man. And joking aside, I'm sure he'll be embracing this as well, Derek G. Like you say, a big star. That's what I was saying before about Vingigo and that. I know he's got his plan for the Welter, but these are the World Championships. Um, just grace them with your presence, and nice to see Derek G here, because everybody will want to see him in the flesh. Christopher Rougier. One, Represents Mauritius. And down the line. Downhill to start. Settles in. Own position, own plan, just like everybody else. And Brian was describing it as a lonely place. Clear whether things are going Mark. well or not. I wasn't going to ask you to pronounce that name there, but this is the uh, the turn uh, at Blair Drummond, where the safari park we've just seen. It goes left up to Thornhill after that. Start of, or very close to the start of a famous kind of horseshoe 25 mile course that comes into Stirling and back out, it's the road that we're it. coming back in, and then turns around and then comes back again in a horseshoe shape. There's Patrick Gamper, who was in the breakaway the other day. He's had a busy week, hasn't he? Breakaway in the men's road race on Sunday. Mixed team relay participant the other day. Time for Ben Healy. A deep breath. Former Irish champion. He's had a stellar year. Really has announced himself on the world scene. And now he's off representing in country. So Healy, good to go. Settles into that familiar position. And here's his compatriot. And look at this, he's going to take six minutes out of Weiss. 50 kilometers per hour to the second intermediate check and Ryan Mullen is looking good. Yeah, he kept that momentum and in fact I think he's increased it because he's what, 119 up at the first? So that's a massive, you know, it's five minutes now, so... Yeah, the Irish will get a lot of support here. Scots and Irish tend to get on pretty well together and, you know, both of these riders, Mullen and Healy, will get plenty of support from the, the locals, but like I was saying before, 
really impressed with the amount of nationalities that are here. I wouldn't say Scotland is the easiest place to get to, but a lot of people deciding to drive here, um, come up to Scotland and, and just kind of more more than just watch the race, just holiday. I was Keith Lambert got in contact with me. We saw him um, the other day there at under 23. He's up here with Bill Nixon riding around some of these roads that I've often talked about and that he's now riding now. Tom Scringe begins his adventure for Latvia. Always a combative, strong rider who'll give everything. Full of heart, plenty of power. He's on the road in that Latvian national jersey. 78 riders here, Brian, from 49 nations. You talked about the different nations. 49 represented in this time trial today. And Scringe is on his way. Not a specialist in this discipline. But he's an aggressive rider, a real attacker. One thing you can guarantee about Tom Scringe, he will give his all. He will. And, you, you know, he's, he's such a character, is Tom Scringe. You know, I've been commentating many years now, and especially the Tour of California, where he came, you know, he came to prominence. Um, and I followed his career, and, you know, one of the main things I did was kind of reaching out to him was, how do you pronounce your name? And, and he came back with the, the real kind of pronunciation, and... It took a while for a lot of people to, to grasp it. Um, but, yeah, he's, he's definitely a character of our sports. Yeah, but while you're here, Latvia don't have many pro bike riders, and so while you're here, why not? Why not experience the whole championships? And, you know, I was a, a little bit similar when I went out to uh, Malaysia um, for the Commonwealth Games in 1998. And concentrating in the road but after that there was uh, a few track races and one was the, the 10 mile now the kind of 20 kilometer and a certain uh, sir chris was uh, you know having a bit of um, tongue in cheek with me so i decided to ride it and that was um, you know an experience in itself to, to i've ridden track but i grew up with track here we had an outdoor track in edinburgh called meadowbank where you know chris kind of grew up riding and um I just don't understand why track racing didn't kind of catch on too much in, in Scotland at the time because of the outdoor track um, and the amount of rain we have, but it's produced some really good bike riders. And the facility we've got at the uh, Chris Hoy Velodrome is actually absolutely spectacular, and I believe that the, the atmosphere in there for the last kind of seven days has been electric. Miltiades Gianuzzos represents Greece. I saw Mick Rogers there in conversation with Mathieu Bodnai. Rogers, a former world champion. Now working for the UCI. <laughs> Wonderful aerial shot of Stirling and its famous castle. William Wallace monument in the distance. Must be one of the most scenic places you've had the World Championships. Now, Ryan Gibbons, keep your eye on this. It's just in the red, isn't it? Second best time, 15.4 seconds down. But the fight remaining very, very close. There were only, what, five seconds between Mullen and Gibbons at the first check, so Mullen has put another 10 seconds into Gibbons here. And Zukowski in the meantime at 147 in the second check. Television viewers rejoin us with Ryan Gibbons having set the second best time at the intermediate check. The second intermediate, that was Ryan Mullen. Here's a man who's hoping to be taking first places as he goes through the checks. Tadej Pogacar. Second of the Austrian representatives. Patrick Gamper. And within the next three quarters of an hour, everybody be on the road. It's a fast-moving time trial, this. All the stars soon together. Getting ready there for Germany. 
is uh, Leonard Kemner. Another aggressive rider. And he knows exactly what it feels like to pull on big jerseys. He's worn a rainbow jersey in the juniors. Yeah, really good um, young rider and, you know, just looking to where he's going to put his gel for later on in this race. A lot of the riders use them, you know, you normally kind of tuck them up their uh, shorts. Don't know where he's putting his. Things move around, don't they? The radios now go generally down the front rather than the back. It depends who you are. Here's Derek G. It's been a while since the Giro d'Italia, but he's back on our screens. One of the stars of the show this season. Looking to show off as he can again. Tracky and a roadie. Attacker, aggressor. Not bad against the clock. Derek G for Canada. Part of an Israel Premier Tech squad that really has had the rebirth this season. He actually met Sylvan Adams at the Grand Fondo. He's now a double world champion, uh, I think, in the 65 to 70 age group. He's the owner of the Israel Premier Tech team. Niels Pollitt time. Now, has he got on to the second check and he's still not quick as Ryan Mullen? It's a 25 second difference here. It had been just three seconds at the first check. So Mullen, of those going through the first check, the best place going through the second check by quite a way so far. In the meantime, we've had our first rider go through the third and final time check just before the finish, and that is uh, Ahmad Bahreddin Weiss, setting a time of an hour and 17 seconds. Is Maciej Bodnar can always dig deep to pull out a performance. Yeah, I think this is the first year that I've seen him in a lot of time trials, Rob, that he hasn't, um, he's kind of lost a, a little bit of that kind of top-end speed, but we're only talking about a matter of years ago. Every time trial, he was a contender to win, especially in a lot of the stage races, and even running in towards some of the finishes when he would clip off uh, and, and try and kind of sneak the, the victory. Very hard to, to be brought back, but a powerhouse and uh, of course we all know him because he's one of uh, Peter Sagan's right-hand men. Stage winner at the Tour de France in Marseille. You and I were in the velodrome when uh, he did it. I'm talking about the Stade Velodrome, the football pitch that was named after the velodrome that used to be there. Stage winner there in the Tour at the end of what will that have been? 2016, 2017 edition, I guess. Maybe stretching to 2018, one of those. <laughs> Found about then. It was a hot day, I remember that. There's a rider from Greece. Name of the nation in Greek on the shorts, Hellas. Militiadis Yanoutsos. Stefan de Bob time. Solid rider from South Africa. Races for EF Education, easy post. Yeah, a bit of a specialist at this. When he first came to prominence, you know, I was looking at a lot of these kind of young South Africans working with a South African team, and they've got support here, as we can see. But, yeah, started well in this type of discipline, always produces a very good time trial. Let's see what he can do today. Now, this is interesting. Mm. Yep, he was ahead, wasn't he, of Ryan Mullen by 11 seconds. And he's now eight and a half seconds behind. So it's a 20 second swing between intermediate check one and intermediate check two. And that just lays the foundation for a story that will change throughout the day, Brian. Whatever you see at that first check, yes, it's important to be in the game, but things can change. Definitely. Um, I think the, the weather forecast is going to say very similar to, to every rider from start to finish, and that's all we ask for. But it looks as if Ryan Mullen on a, a very good ride today, as we can see from a screen at the intermediate. Of course, the harder drags are still to come, but by the look of things so far, um, a top 10 performance is possibly in the cards for Ryan after uh, the round of 23 with Rafferty. Three, two, Here's Matthias Vatsek. Really strong rider. That win at the UAE Tour. 
and since moved to a top level team strong young rider and he's off now representing Czechia Czech Republic I remember um, my dad worked on the Scottish milk race many many years ago and the Czechs came over and I went to watch it as a young lad and as we look on to still in university here um, but it was I think they got one two three four um, I think they came into Irvine in one stage and you know they, they, they clean swept it at all so the Czechs came here and stole everything away from the uh, the Scots but I think the Scots have um, come back now uh, with uh, some some top performances um, since then but uh, yeah I can just remember seeing that Czech national jersey just flash past one two three four and it was amazing uh, to see um, such a dominant nation they produce a lot of good um, good bike riders it's almost Leonard Kem the time you're wondering where the gel would go Brian there's the answer The second of the two Germans on the course. A reminder that Niels Pollitt has been in the top five times so far. Leonard Kemner's turn now. And with Kemner now off, we're into the final 30 riders to start. Dan Haller didn't have a good time of it in the mix relay. He looks happier than he did then, thankfully. Beset by bad luck, the whole Dutch team was. It's a big day for the Dutch team because Jos van Emden has today announced his retirement. He was a prolific um, time trial specialist, uh, Jos van Emden, maybe over the last kind of, couple of years became a bit of a ruler and when I say a ruler someone that uh, would look after their GC contender on some of the kind of flatter stages but definitely someone that um, you know hopefully will will go out with a, a good performance today back with Derek Cheat to hit these roads sometimes when you're coming back in big long straight roads nowhere to hide and the wind would be blowing in fact uh, we had a training camp up here Scott cycling when Philippa York was here and in fact she had a, an evening with uh, with herself at this uh, science center last night and uh, I believe it was a success now here's Weiss the first finisher and the benchmark time is 107.26. I can tell you straight away that the man coming in behind him isn't going to beat it, Aidan uh, Bertigig, but Ryan Mullen will. He has taken eight minutes out of the first two riders at that third intermediate. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> at the end of a long, hard effort. Yevgeny Fedorov, former under-23 champion of the world. Now in the seniors, as well as a strong ruler and classics man, he's not bad against the clock. This looks like Kemner from the app. Summer scene in Scotland. He's still got 45 kilometers to ride. A very warm welcome back to you viewers on the television. And this is our first sighting of the mighty machine to be used by Filippo Ganna. Or one of them. Because he will have backups, he'll have spares, he'll have that set up ready. For a two-time world champion still to come. He today, by the way, will be the fifth from last rider off. Next up from USA is Lawson Craddock. Ten. Five, four, three, two, one, go. 
By no means a favourite for this, but he's a strong, solid rider. Has always been good at this discipline. Former uh, time trial champion of uh, the USA as well, won it one year. So I think, uh, again, a lot of these riders are coming here to, to enjoy being part of the championships. Of course, many of these riders got an opportunity to ride the, the road race, but this is an individual effort just to you know, challenge themselves against the best. As Bruno Mirai, Thomas Vauclair, his national selector, and here is our first serious finisher. First times have been set, but look at this. It's going to be around nine minutes taken out of those opening times by Ryan Mully. He's only going to be the third rider to finish here. Weiss at the top time. Boutique of Malta was 10.4 seconds down, and nine minutes, five seconds in front is Ryan Mullen of Ireland, who'll move into the hot seat. Gave it absolute everything. I hope we actually catch up with Ryan Mullen and it gives a, a bit of a, an overview of the course. I know the roads, but it'd be nice to get it from a, a rider's point of view, but he was absolutely spent there. It's Dan Haller time. No visor in the helmet for him. No sunglasses either. Really get that head down and settle down. And he's got all he needs. Time to get back that focus again. Headwind start, by the way, today, and it's howling at the minute. Yeah. <laughs> Ryan Mullen, top five previously. It has been a big time of it for him in the last year or so. He's become a father for the first time as his partner. It's just a brutal finish, though, up to the castle. You know, I don't think... I know we see it in Grand Tours and things like that, but for a World Championship time trial, we don't often see that, and it really is about judging that effort. It's, it's because it's such a long time trial, it's not overly difficult. It's just power down, power down. There's very few areas where you can relax a little bit and get your breath, so it's powering the legs the whole time. Then you get these lumps towards the finish, and then you get that kick up to the finish. This is a real killer. Nelson Oliveira time into the final 25 riders. And the names now will come thick and fast as ones you recognize. If you've been watching us this afternoon, siesta time, maybe half asleep in summer, time to wake up properly because in the next 10 minutes, you're going to have a two time world champion in Rowan Dennis. We're going to have Wart van Aert, Josh Tarling. And if the latter can do something, he would be the youngest ever winner of this. Here's a two-time winner of it. Rowan Dennis, who's about to ride the last serious time trial of his career. Retires at the end of the season. Is there one last hurrah left for the Australian? It's always a big question, Mark, for me. Um, he maybe not have the perfect season so far, but you can never discount him. Rowan Dennis is... You know, a real time trial specialist, and he's one of these um, guys that you push him back, and he'll push even stronger back towards you. And I think he's not here just to make up the numbers. Richie Port described him as the perfect teammate, the most loyal teammate. Today he rides for himself. The whole nation, though, will be backing him up. The second of the two French entries. First of the two French entries, pardon me, is Bruno Mirai. Rémi Cavagna still to come. It's been a good year for this man, hasn't it? Pink jersey at the Giro d'Italia. Big moment in his career, that will be it. A couple of days, he knew the score. This man knows the score. 19 years of age. If he's to compete today and pull something off really special, he would be the first ever teenage winner of the senior event. I mean, there's a lot that has to fall into place for that to happen, but he is a mighty, mightily talented rider. And a few watchers have put him inside the top 10 favourites. Definitely for me, inside the top 10. Um, you know, I saw him against in the Tour of Wallonie. Um, have you seen 
very close here from uh, Ryan Gibbons. So, you know, he's ridden well, stayed close to Ryan Mullen. So, you know, five seconds back to Ryan Mullen. So, good performance there for um, the uh, South African. Um, but Ryan Mullen stays in the hot seat for the moment. But. Yes, but Askren is on his way. Didn't happen for him in the road race. What are his legs like in the time trial? They were certainly good in the Tour de France. Well, the thing about it, Rob, is, you know, normally when you finish well in the Tour de France, like win a stage, second the next day, um, you know, you come out with good legs, and it was a surprise. Maybe it was, you know, the diesel legs instead of the, you know, the kind of fresher legs. But he's had a few more days to recover, and um, hopefully he'll put a, a better performance in uh, today. Two times second in this discipline at this level. He is a current Belgian champion. Wild van Aert. Just getting back to Josh Tarling. Um, the performance he put in in the time trial in Wallonie, uh, over about what, 33 kilometres, and he was only seconds away from Ghana. I really do think a top five, top six performance from uh, Josh Charlin will, will show his um, his abilities to the world. This is a big moment in the career of Rowan Dennis, a two-time world champion in this discipline. Against the clock, against the world, for one last time, let's see what he can do for Australia cheered on on his way and Dennis is never a man to be underestimated you know you could call him one of the kind of monsters of this discipline you know the Australians over the last few years have produced so many good time trialists he's exceptional and you know just when you think he's down he comes back up again I think for me with Ron Dennis is the fact his ability to climb a couple of years ago when uh, he was helping tail gig and heart to his He's won in the Giro d'Italia. He was, he was absolutely amazing. There's Stefan Bissiger. Back to Rowan Dennis, by the way. Such a special talent. If you look down the history of this particular event in the men's division, there are only six men who have ever won it more than once. And Rowan Dennis is one of them. He's in quite the esteemed company. Fabian Cancellara, Tony Martin, Mick Rogers, Jan Ulrich and Filippo Ganna. And we move to Filippo Ganna's national teammate, Mattia Cattaneo, who's hit form in this discipline, hasn't he? A winner in Poland last week. Five, four, three, two, one, go. Cattaneo, as an under-23, was a Giro d'Italia winner. As a senior rider, he settled into role of helper. But in time trialing, he seems to get stronger as the years go by, Brian. Yeah, over the last couple of years, you can see that in many of the time trials, he's, he's right up there with some of the best. So maybe it doesn't um, look as if he's too powerful, but he definitely is. Next finisher will be Niels Pollitt. He's going to be within a minute of Ryan Mullen, the leader. Good enough for third place now. We are getting news from the first time check, by the way, that there's been a new fastest time, and that has gone to the South African Stefan de Bod. Six seconds quicker than Knotten. Maciej Bodnar has started off solidly as well. He's at six seconds as well. Derek G just in front of Ryan Mullen. So Ryan Mullen, after top time, has been set at the first check. Current leader in the clubhouse, but 17 seconds behind. One to watch. Less than 12 months ago, the man on your screen was the world junior time trial champion. No under 23s, straight to the seniors, straight to top 10 favourite status. It's Josh Tarling for Great Britain on home roads with a chance of a lifetime. And you are looking at one mightily talented bike rider. Tarling then on the road. He's followed a world champion in Rowan Dennis. And the next man onto the start ramp is none other than Walt van Aert. We're on the way properly now, Brian. 
Yeah, the big hitters are coming, including Josh Tarling. I know he's not proved it yet, but, you know, just that kind of build-up you gave him there, it's... It's incredible, incredible to see. You know, over the last kind of two or three years, I've seen him through um, a cycling academy, and I was involved with um, uh, Road Stars. And Nick Tilling has done a great job with these guys, and, and seeing them progress. And you know, can we see, uh, you know, somebody like that kind of try and get on the podium? I think that will be in the back of his mind. And I think in his interview, he said he would. Uh, he's come here to try and win it. Will this be Walt world champion? Twice second, a course that suits him. A monster talent of all monster talents is now on the course. And if there was a time trial route at a world championships ready, built for this man, Brian Smith, this would be it. Yeah, I think so. He came here a few weeks ago looking at the course and, you know, was really happy with it. and. OK, he might have been slightly disappointed at the weekend uh, with his road performance, but he looks super strong. It's just Matthew van der Poel was that much, that much better than everybody. I really do think this is between Ghana and uh, Wolf van Aert, and I think I've said Wolf van Aert um, is my favourite today. And You know, let's see, because there's a, a lot of talented bike riders out there, some still to come, but I think Wolf van Aert uh, is showing that definitely he's the man to beat today. Believe it or not, there has never, ever been a Belgian men's individual world time trial champion. That's quite difficult to believe. We might have, this event began in 1994, the professional worlds. Still a long time for possibly the biggest of all the traditional cycling nations. Stefan Bissiger's underway. Always a man to be reckoned with. The European champion settling down and a man who on his day would not surprise anybody by walking away with a rainbow jersey. I remember when he broke onto the scene, um, who's this guy with a funny helmet on? Um, and he was just incredible. And he's, you know, managed by... Of course, Fabian Cancellara, who's, you know, in this discipline was, you know, one of the best ever. And I'm sure he's come here. I, I don't know too much about what he's done over the last few weeks, but definitely um, he's come here to try and kind of get up there in the medals. And, you know, let's see what he can do, because he's definitely another one of these kind of young, talented bike riders. Harold Dejada sneaks in just over a minute and eight seconds down and just under an hour of riding for him. Ryan Mullen remains the leader. Mullen still the leader at the third checkpoint, still the leader at the second checkpoint. This is Søren Varadshult, under 23 star. Time to do it in the seniors. First of two Norwegians, the other is the defending champion. And Brian Smith, we've no graphic on the screen, but an eye over to the timing equipment shows that we have a new fastest time at the first intermediate check. And that new fastest time belongs to Leonard Kemner. Four seconds quicker than Stefan de Bod, 14 minutes, 37 seconds. And there it, it is. It did seem rather focused. Um, you know, even the camera shots we're getting behind the scenes, of course, everybody is, is, is focused. A bit more relaxed was Tom Squinch and maybe some of the others, but he's one that I noticed that you know wanted to you know get out there. I was really impressed with Malaysia the other day, the under-23 champion. The way he said he just went out there and gave it absolute everything from start to finish. That was his strategy. Um, it's, it's one of these things. If you look at it straight first part, then a kind of crosswind over to Blair Drummond, the flattest part of the course to the first time check. You can't take it easy at all. You have to go full into it because these drags aren't that hard they can hurt the legs a little bit you just have to save that little bit of energy for the climb up to the finish in the cobbles from the basque country representing spain it's xavi asparren solid rider not one of the favorites in this discipline spain at the minute at this level without a huge pool of talent of course juan ayuso is off preparing for the vuelta España, isn't he so he's not here 
And we had some very strong Spanish performances in the youth categories. Bill Oki in the juniors. There's Ben Lomond again. Just in the distance at the top of the screen. Obscured by those few clouds around. 20 degrees the temperature today in Scotland. And in Stirling where we're racing, the wind up to around 20 kilometres per hour. It's a headwind start. If you're flicking on, tuning in. I'll tell you that the leader in the clubhouse right now is Ryan Mullen of Ireland. Finished in 58 minutes. And you're watching Josh Tarling here, the British champion. He is only 19 years of age. Former world champion as recently as 10 months ago in the junior category. It's been a big year for Brandon McNulty. Now a Grand Tour stage winner. Still a young man. Racing for the USA. He's strong against the clock. And he's off down the ramp in his bid for world glory. Yeah, well, he's had world, world glo glory at, um, you know, junior level in the past before. Comes from Phoenix in, in Arizona, a long, long way from here. I know, because I used to live out that way in the 90s when I raced there. But, yeah, Brandon McNulty, as you say, decided to do, use his own route um, to the highest levels of our sport. And, you know, he's brought the fruits of that. Cavenya ready to go. And we're back with Wat for Nat. Been um, encouraged by the Dutch there, probably because he rides for a Dutch team. Dutch team today don't have big favourites, do they? They have solid riders. And certainly a man in Jos van Emden who's going to be more motivated than ever. And here he goes for the last time at a World Championships. Just hours after announcing that he'll say goodbye to the sport at the end of the season. It's the former Dutch champion. It's a man who has won a Giro d'Italia time trial as well. It's Jos van Emden for one last big hit out. He did re relax in the start gate there. A little bit of a smile. I know this is a long one, but... He's another one of these specialists that have uh, he's delivered multiple national titles. Always a threat when it comes to a, a time trial performance. And I'm not going to say go out there and enjoy it, Yus, <laughs> because when you get to the finish, you'll be absolutely your hands and knees. But try and take it in. New fastest time at the first check has been set by Nelson Oliveira of Portugal. Just under five seconds quicker than Leonard Kemner. Top five after first check looks like this. A reminder, though, again, if you're switching on a little late, just under 50 kilometre distance, this. It's a long time trial for modern cycling. I know that a lot of traditionalists are going to be screaming at the telly and say, oh, it's not long, blah, blah, blah. But in terms of what we've had in the last few years, yes, this is long. 352 metres of climbing to be done. It's a good test, this. Tom Sexton is next. Rides for New Zealand. Having a good time of it on the boards, aren't they, at the minute? And in the mountain biking, New Zealand. And Sexton's on the way. Member of the Black Spoke team. Team that moved up to second division level this year. Going from strength to strength. Another new bit of news from the first time check as we look at more of the stars waiting to go. It's that Bruno Almirail is now the fastest rider at the first check. Three seconds quicker than Nelson Oliveira. In the meantime, Biel, a three-time under-23 world champion, chatting to trade teammate Tadej Pogacar, who's always up for a bit of laughing and joking. I don't think he wants to. Uh, Biel just is sitting there, focus, right, focus, go through it, and then he's... His teammate there is wanting to talk to him and he's like, he doesn't want to turn around and tell him to shut up. <laughs> Your television viewers rejoin us just at the time we get the news that Kispar Askren has set the new fastest time at the first check. Seven seconds better than Almirai. Ten in front of Oliveira. Leader in the clubhouse is Mullen. 
Next rider to the start ramp is João Almeida. And in the next five riders, three of them are trade teammates. Almeida, Biel, Pogacar. And in fact, actually, the next six riders, four of them are teammates, because straight after Pogacar, it's Jay Vine. <laughs> all riding for UAE Emirates today, all representing their various nations in the World Time Trial Championships. I felt for Almeida in the road race after uh, his, his troubles in the neutral zone, but I tell you what, he came good in the end. You know, he wasn't that far off one of the you know, top, um, I think, 20 finishers. Um, top 20 or something like that he got uh, out the kind of 51 that finished but yeah, I think he's always a good um, time trial specialist but you know just looking at Nelson Oliveira he, he goes under the radar a lot uh, we had him on our, our set um, during the I think it was the Giro d'Italia a few years ago and he stood next to me and I thought how, you know somebody that small how, how can you go that fast where's all that power come from but he does produce big power for a small rider and He's always there and thereabouts in time trials, but yeah, every minute and 20 seconds that go by, we are getting some big riders now. There's no high speed rail in these parts, but this is the TGV on different terrain, hoping he can lay the lines for others to follow. And for all Ron Dennis fans, he went through the first time check seven seconds behind Casper Askreen, so he's in the game. A reminder that we've had time changes, even though we've had one leader throughout the checks from two to three so far, Ryan Mullen. But in and around him, there were big swings. As we look down at Dune Castle, yeah, the that, fisherman's that's... still out there in the river. Yeah, he's fly fishing, which um, he might have a license or he's doing it on the fly, but. It's just about a few miles from Blair Drummond where we turn at the safari park. It's just a few more miles north of where we are. Watching Søren Varnenskjold. Rainbow jersey last year in the under-23s. <laughs> the contrast, like, Pogacar's just want to engage, doesn't he? And the others are just like, I, I just want to focus. And he's turned round to one teammate before, Biel who's on the start line, he's turned round to Jay Vine, his other teammate, he just wants to chat. You're looking at the man who has the record for under-23 wins, but nobody's ever won in the under-23 and gone to take senior glory in the men's elite time trial. Miguel Biel will be trying to surprise everybody and do just that. He won a time trial in the Dauphiné this year, and here he is riding for Denmark, one of the top time trialling nations in the world. Yeah, I was just about to say that time trial when he had in the Dauphine. I was quite fortunate to do the, the commentary for that. And, you know, such a hard time trial in that race. And, you know, he's one of the ones that's beat the kind of big guns in our sport. Um, and he was been allowed to go for it this year. He was told he, he couldn't go for it and had to just kind of ride uh, and enjoy himself. But, yeah, you could see he totally focused. Watching Wout van Aert on his way to the time check at 12.6 kilometres in. We'll get that time in just a moment. I can tell you, though, it's all changed because Josh Tarling, yes, Josh Tarling of Great Britain has set the new fastest time and he has put almost 20 seconds into Kespa Askren. He's 25 seconds ahead of Mattia Catania, who's just gone through it. Rowan Dennis in fourth, Bruna Mirai at 26. Uh, says the final checks for Pogaccia with the two-time world champion, Filippo Ganna, ready and waiting. Eighth from last athlete is Walter Vargas. Racing for a big cycling nation, but look at this. He finds himself surrounded by time-trialing superstars here. Because next up is Pogaccia. Then we have Vine. And then we're into the final five. Ganna, Thomas, Evenepoel, Kung and defending champion Foss. It's quite the lineup. So Bissig on his way to the check. We're waiting for Wat van Aert, but a big, big moment there with Josh Tarling setting the fastest time so far, Brian, at the first check. Yeah, that's huge when you consider the, the times round about it. As you say, Kasper Askreen, 14.22, 14.03. That's big at this moment in, in the uh, course. This is the destination today. Beautiful Stirling Castle in Scotland. It sits between Edinburgh, the capital, and Scotland's friendliest city, Glasgow. 
A man who likes to be friendly, who likes to be jovial. Time to get serious. Tadej Pogacar. We know that there is nothing he can't do. On the podium in the road race. Thumbs up, ready to go. He's the only Slovenian in this men's individual time trial. Hoping to become the first Slovenian winner. Tadej Pogacar, the cycling world superstar across disciplines and types of racing on the road. Classic winner this year. Grand Tour podium finisher and already a multiple Tour de France winner. And talking of Tour de France winners. Hello, Garrett. Geraint Thomas at 37 years of age, turning up for a home world championships. Garrett Thomas is 37, Brian. The oldest winner of this, Bradley Wiggins, 34 years of age. Records are there to be broken, though. Yeah, they are. And, um, you know, I'm just expecting the best from uh, Geraint Thomas, and I'm pretty sure we will in this course. You know, he big likes news. to perform. Sorry, but big news coming through from the first time check, Brian. Sorry to interrupt. It concerns Sorry. this man. He is 27 seconds down at the first check. Well, that is big. Very big. That stopped me in my tracks a little. Yes, yeah, same here. I didn't expect that. Um, and, you know, he'll really be looking for a, a massive, you know, end to this um, time trial course today because that is big. That's the... I was thinking that the kind of headwinds, kind of crosswind over at Blair Drummond, that would be his territory, but no. Josh Tarling is still killing it at that moment. Um, it's about, you know, kind of hanging on more for uh, Josh Tarling. Well, I think uh, Walt Van Aert has to give a lot, lot more. Well, there is, of course, the, such a thing as a negative split, but it's going to have to be a mighty negative split, isn't it? Walt Van Aert, sixth place at 27.37 seconds. 42 seconds down with Stefan Bissiger, slower than Stefan de Bod, Leonard Kemner. Keep your eyes on those times. Again, it's a long old time trial today. And we're not putting it, the nail in anybody's coffin as far as their opportunities are concerned yet, but they are surprising results from the first time check. Jay Vines down the ramp. Next up, another one of the six men to have only ever won it more than once. We've seen Dennis, now it's Ganna. Last the world champion in 2021, he wants the rainbow jersey back. And Filippo Ganna is on his way. From the track a few days ago to the road here, but doing what he does best, try to beat the clock. He sits down, he settles down. A big day for Ganna. There's the defending champion. Only four riders still left to go back onto the road. First side of Pogaccia on Scottish roads on the time trial bike. As he looked to you in the time trial position when you compare him to the specialists like Philippe Pogana. Do you know what that impresses me most about uh, Pogacar? He's just enjoying, he's just like a kid in a sweet shop. Everything he does, he enjoys. So that's part and parcel of any t any discipline of cycling. But, um, you know, he said he's enjoying being here, which is the big part. And uh, he wants to do a performance like he did uh, last weekend in the Elite Road Race. Geraint Thomas, second in the Giro d'Italia. The last time he rode a serious time trial, it was in the pink jersey. He's since been away, he's trained, he's hoping to end the day in rainbows. He'll be hoping that his form returns in time, like a jigsaw falling into place. And Vuelta España after this is next big game. But put an objective in front of this man, and there are very few people in world sport who will ride to it, who will train to it and produce the goods as often as Geraint Thomas. He's just got the experience, isn't he? He knows what he has to do. Um, 
you know, even last year, who was so impressive in the Tour de France, when he knew that the podium was there to be had, and you know, he rode for that. He never tried to, you know, chase anything else. But he's just got that experience and knows what he can deliver. Stefan Kung, silver and bronze. He wants gold. He wants an individual rainbow jersey. But we've seen Remco Rainbow disappear into the distance. Even a pool unable to retain his road world championship. Can he become the main man against the clock? Even a pool building up to the Vuelta too. Where does he lie against the clock? He was in Flanders in the velodrome at the Eddie Merck Cycling Centre a few weeks ago, testing the skin suit, position and everything on the track. Every little millimetre, bit of detail has been worked on. And with Yves Nepal on the road, only two more left to start. We're starting to get times come through the second check. I can tell you that Ryan Mullins still leads ahead of Norton. Ryan Gibbons in third place. Ben Healy coming through at 24 seconds. I'm told that Derek G is approaching with some speed. He could be the man to set the new fastest time there. McNulty is through the first time check in eighth place. Warren Schold in ninth. Mark Van Aert still sixth. The leader remains Josh Tarling. It's Stefan Kuhn who yet again got that Swiss timing right in the mixed relay the other day. Two, one, go. Is it time for an individual rainbow jersey? He's tried and tried and tried. He's had silver, he's had bronze, and here is Stefan Kuhn going for gold. Derek G close to Ryan Mullen at the second intermediate check. It's going to be close, and in fact, it's a new fastest time. 50 k's an hour, and the Canadian going really well. Ryan Mullen, leader in the clubhouse at the moment. And now we're just under 30 k's to go. Watt van Aert, not out of it, but he was down, wasn't he, at the first check. We're waiting for him to approach that second check. He's a man who's been through all the checks and sitting in the hot seat. Let's hear from the leader, Ireland's Ryan Mullen. Well, Ryan, uh, congratulations on that best time. <laughs> Take us through with that really, really long ride. Uh... Yeah, it was really long. <laughs> no, I mean, it was it's quite windy today, so it was quite hard to kind of judge like, where to apply your power. Um, but I just think I'm a big guy, just a case of trying to get as small as you can and stay as aerodynamic as you can for as long as you can until your body hurts. And then, yeah, come to finish, it did hurt. <laughs> what did you expect at the end of the day? I don't know. I really don't know. I mean, I don't do as much work anymore focusing around the TTs. Uh, you know, I'm part of like lead out trains, um, so I don't really pay as much attention as I used to for, to the TT. I, I, I'm doing this solely because I enjoy it. Uh, and I think it's quite nice to race because I enjoy it rather than because I have to or I'm told to or I get paid to. It's, I'm doing this because I want to and uh, I think that helps, uh, helps get the most out of yourself. A nice, honest interview there for the boy from Birkenhead, representing Ireland, Ryan Mullen. And yes, telling us that, you know, a lot of people tune in casually to watch the Tour de France. And these specialities are interesting, aren't they? Mullen started life as a time trialist, but his qualities have been used by the team elsewhere, Brian, and that affects training. Yes, a pro rider is, is you know, fitting into a team and, you know, the team, especially with um, Sam Bennett there, yeah. He, he, there's no, they don't need a, a time trial specialist. They don't look at kind of team time trials now or time trial specialists. It's more towards, you know, GC uh, team and, of course, uh, sprint leader. And you have to adjust these times. Um, that's part and parcel of being, you know, part of, a, you know, the working force of a team these days. Um, and he just heard it from him there. It's, it's quite windy out there. There's no chance to relax. It's, it's very difficult to judge. Um, 
you know, is that the reason why Walt Van Aert has decided to go out that bit, maybe that bit easier and come back that bit stronger? We'll have to wait and see what the strategy is. But, but that headwind didn't start. Then we turn right, then we get the crosswinds, then you get the first check part, part, uh, mark, and then you find out where you are. Um, and then you get that information and what you do with it. So let's see. We've definitely got a race in our hands, and it's, it's going to be as exciting as the, the other time trials. While we were listening to Ryan Mullen there, we had the defending champion start. Tobias Foss is underway. Everybody's now underway in this time trial. I can tell you that to come through the first check, we still have nine riders. Remy Cavagnard has just set the second best time at the first check at 16.3 seconds still from Josh Tarling. Second check, we're getting Stefan de Bod in third place at 8.9 seconds. And we're waiting for Ganna to approach that first check. Yeah, it still leaves um, Josh Tarling in with a very healthy lead at that moment. You've got to consider that, uh, you know, he went through there at 14.03, um, you know, to 14.20 for uh, Remy Cavagna. So the first part of this course, he's absolutely killing it. But yet, yeah, Tobias Foss, um, the defending champion, a bit of a surprise last year that he won. No real surprise that, you know, he's from Norway because the Norwegians are, are just coming through the ranks you know, left, right and centre and producing some riders across pretty much all disciplines of our sport. So, but um, a bit of a surprise and I'd be really surprised if he, if he got a medal this year, though. Even a pool, the winner of two time trials at the Giro d'Italia. Before he had to leave with COVID. And in the pink jersey as well. The talk about the win's an interesting one. The reported speed at the minute is 18, 20 kilometres per hour, but we're hearing of plenty of gusts about as well as as strong as 40 k's an hour today. More news from the first check is that Mikel Biel has come through in third place, a fraction of a second slower than Remy Cavagna, so he's paced his start very well. Reminder that that means that Wart van Aert's time, the eighth best set so far. Second intermediate check, Leonard Kemner. Now, he was quicker than Mullen at the first check. He was quicker than G. How's he going to fare at the second check? It's very, very close. Two hundredths slower than Derek G. And still with all of that still to go, only three and a half seconds from Ryan Mullen. Mullen has a good chance of hanging on for quite a long time in this hot seat. Back with Pogaccia here. Coming up to the uh, second checkpoint, Rob, here, and he's going to be outside. So mm. you saw that Walt Van Aert was outside um, by 20 odd seconds, and it's going to be even more now to Pogacar. 10th provisionally for Tadej Pogacar. 
But just look at that speed drop. It's just incredible at this moment. That that's the into the headwind crosswind. That's the flattest part of the course. So it's a couple of these riders got a lot to do. Has Josh Tarling gone out and used that part of the course to his benefit? He may suffer um, towards the end, but definitely I'm not too sure anybody would be beating that time of Josh Tarling for the moment anyway. Um, I think he still should be the, the fastest man at the, when everybody's through there. First sight of Jay Vine here. Welcome back to your television viewers. Updates from the intermediate checks. See Josh Tarling still the fastest. Tadej Pogacar in 10th place. Ever so slightly slower than Wat van Aert, who is 8th at that first check. A reminder that this is an almost 50-kilometre time trial course today. Leader in the clubhouse is Ryan Mullen with 58 minutes, 21.5 seconds. That finish on the cobbles up the hill at Stirling Castle. And Jay Vine, the Australian stars, the latest to approach this first intermediate time check. 15th place, 34.9 down. So either we've got quite a few strong negative splits going on today, Brian, or there is, well, a really, really solid time that's been set by Josh Darling. This is Lawson Craddock, who's the new leader, pardon me, Brian, at the second intermediate check. Eight yeah, seconds still quicker over than Derek G. 50 kilometres an hour there, Rob, so still, um, you know, punching high in the numbers there. So very fast start. And now we're starting to see Philip Ogana coming up to this point. So, wow. First one, Josh Tarling, his teammates, and Ghana it beats them by almost seven seconds. 54.2 kilometres an hour. That's incredible. S Keep your arm, Ben Healy here, coming up to the finish line. You can see it in sight. He's not close enough to take the lead off his teammate. Internal competition between Ryan Mullen and Ben Healy. Could be an Irish one and two, though, for now. But it would have to be closer than that, because Ryan Gibbons at five seconds. It's a fight here for the hot seat. Yes, he will have to go to the hot seat. Just in front of Norton of Norway. Ben Healy provisionally third. So with Ghana through that checkpoint at 12.6, that means 34 seconds between himself and Walt Van Aert. I keep your eye on this checkpoint because Geraint Thomas is next through it. Then we will have Remco Evenepoel, Stefan Kung and Tobias Foss. Once those four riders are through the first checkpoint, we start to get a real lay of the land and it sets the scene for the show to play out. And you're looking at the second intermediate check where Nelson Oliveira is on his way to setting the fastest time, it seems. At the first check, he was up there at the time. He's since been beaten by quite a few strong riders. Oliveira, the Portuguese, and look at that! 41 seconds quicker than Lawson Craddock. It's fast, isn't it? Just over uh, 51 kilometres an hour. Um, you know, even with that headwind in the start, you know, we, we heard the preview of this course, how long it was, how difficult it was. The speed that these guys are going through here is, is incredible. Now, Caroline Thomas is in and around Wat van Aert territory, isn't he, here? Ninth place provisionally. Ever yeah, so slightly quicker than Wat van Aert, in fact. Thomas at 14.31. Ghana the quickest through there so far at 13.57. Thomas's teammate Tarling. 19 years of age, still the second fastest time at 6.7. With Cavagna in third. Now Evenepoel, and all the focus will be on him. How's he going? Just a reminder that Ghana's time, 13.57. So we're just coming up to that time. We're in the barrier, right. so quite close. And this is going to be good from Evenepoel. He'll be there or thereabouts to Josh Tarling slightly quicker. Remco is rocketing. 4.6 seconds slower. And he's almost half a minute quicker there 
than his national teammate Wat van Aert. Again, we're reminded the pacing strategies might be different, you never know, but Remco Evenepoel has started really well. well. I think most of the contenders that we thought about before this race, um, you know, Ghana, Evenepoel, these type of riders that are not that very, you know, that are, are pretty close to each other. I think the biggest one for me is uh, Wat van Aert. Screens over in sixth place provisionally at 1.02 down on Ryan Mullen, who remains the leader. Ireland at the moment have two riders on the podium, first and third. The time checks following behind. That would be scheduled to change. Armirai at the second check. Now, he was going really quickly, wasn't he, at the first check? He was faster than Oliveira, but he's down on him now. Back with Kung. Now he's approaching this next time check, or should say the first time check. Well, he should have gone through it, surely. Yeah, he's 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 passed it, or he should have gone gone through it already. If he hasn't, he he's needs down. to make some time up. Yeah. Yeah, down big time. He's not even close to the barrier situation, so you'd you'd think that's in the first part of the course, and and like you say, no, he's down. He so, like down. you say, wow. pacing strategy. Askren set off very quickly, didn't he? 19 seconds slower, though, than Oliveira. We're seeing lots of seesawing and swinging between points one and two. Reminder, there are three timing points, and look at this. Now, that's a big gap to somebody like King. I can only think that um, maybe he's catching up with King a little bit, the road race where he rode well. And then the um, team relays as well, where they, where they won. But he is conceding a lot of time. And I don't think for one moment it's they've really gone out that easy. I'm saying easy. They're still riding well above 50 kilometres an hour. But it is about that kind of strategy. Um, but I think the big one for me is uh, what Van Aert for the moment. Stefan King, 40 seconds down on Filippo Ganna. Long way to go. That's a lot of time to bring back. We're here with Rowan Dennis, two-time world champion, riding the final world championship of his career. And he is the quickest at the second check, just in front of Nelson Oliveira. Three hundredths, in fact. Yeah, the quickest now, but I'm not too sure it's going to be good enough for a medal today for, for Rowan Dennis. Um, but great to see him here in Scotland and, you know, riding this time trial, as you say, former double world champion and, you know, graced by his presence here and... You know, he would just want to get the best possible uh, result. But, you know, this man has got a lot to do, Walt Van Aert. He was well down at the uh, the first uh, checkpoint. He'll know that. So, you know, he'll want to improve in that. We do know it's a very difficult finish. The uh, the climb up Kirk, um, Kippen and Enger, Gunnock and Canvas Barham, that's their kind of power climbs. It's that climb up towards the finish. I think I said in the under-23s, maybe... 10, 15 seconds of a difference between feeling good and feeling bad. But for this moment, you know, he's he's trailing by over 30 seconds. Coming up to the second time check then. We're going to go briefly to the finish because Derek G has a big opportunity here. And he's looking to step into the hot seat. He was the quickest at the third check. He's got a fight to get over the line in time to beat Ryan Mullen. Look at this, 58, 21, 57, but the time's ticking away. It's still green. It should stay green, but he's got that final few set of agonising pedal strokes to get over the line, and he does it. 4.4 seconds quicker than Ryan Mullen. Derek G into the hot seat for now. There are faster riders coming up behind, but Derek G's off to take the place of Ryan Mullen. In the meantime, everybody, sorry, Brian, but everybody's gone through that first time check now, and the defending champion, Tobias Foss, was in 10th place. Yeah, Josh Tarling just threw, uh, just as we've seen Derek G finish there at the second checkpoint at 34.7. He's gone through their fastest. Look at this, and look at the difference. 47. 58 seconds quicker. That is a serious, serious marker. That's a long way to go yet. And a lot of things that can change. 
But that's a time that will be watched. That's a time that may well stand the test of time at that check. Yeah, well, Van Aert won't be long. By the time he's through, that's 39.47, one twenty between each of them. So Walt Van Aert can't be that far away. It's how much time he is actually kind of pulled back, because I really do think that he needs to be pulling back something. And you can just see the uh, time check, I think, in the distance now. Well, he's going to be slower than Josh Tarling. We know at the first check he was already quite a bit slower. I think, I think it was just under a half slower. a minute, wasn't it? Yeah, you go around this corner and then you're on to the um, the second time check. So I think he's he's still down by a considerable amount of margin. Timing equipment says he's expected in about fifth place. So still work to do for Wart van Aert. Veteran Polish star Maciej Bodnar over in sixth place provisionally. 56 seconds on the new leader, Derek G from Canada. And here is Van Aert at the timing check. Oh, my word. He's over a minute down on Josh Tarling. Now, Wat Van Aert. Is this Wat Van Aert not at his best? Is it Josh Tarling having a wondrous day, or is it a bit of both? In all honesty, Rob, I, I don't know. We, I knew that Josh Tarling and Ghana were on good form. Just seen uh, Stefan de Bode finish in, uh, looks like, second place there. Fourth place, sorry, 13.05 down. Look, I saw that at, at Tour de Wallonie after the Tour de France, Ghana and uh, Josh Tarling were very, very similar. And they, they were kind of head and shoulders above everybody else in that time trial. So I don't think there's a lot separating them. I can only think that maybe Walt Van Aert is paying the price because this is not, I don't think this is a, a huge performance from, from uh, Walt Van Aert today. I thought he'd be one of the contenders. In fact, I was backing him today, but I think Josh Tarlin could be on his way to a potential medal here, which would be absolutely amazing. It does seem uh, Philip Ogana is the, the man to be on the course, but as you keep on saying, Rob, there is a long, long way to go, and you have to you know, really kind of pace this one out. Evney Paul is another rider that is, is really kind of stepping up now. So, you know, we definitely got a race on. Um, Stephen Kong, you know, down in kind of 18th place at the first time check. I think by the looks of things, after that first che time check, I know it's early, this is the man to beat. Filippo Ganna has Jay Vine in his sights. Just see around the corner there, the Australian. Ganna looks like he's on one of those days. Two-time world champion. That's just on the road in the time trial. We know what he can do in the track. Did it in the IP, didn't he, in that heart attack finished against Dan Bigham last week. We're with Bissiger here, and this is a long, long way down for somebody like Stefan Bissiger. One minute, 44 of a difference to Josh Tarling. And again... That's no disservice to Josh Tarling, who is a highly talented rider, a junior world champion last year, but he's 19. The current European champion, Brian, is almost two minutes down on him. It's incredible when you look at it, you know, dare I say it, are we going to see Ghana, Evne Paul, Josh Tarling on the podium? That would be, you know, what, what a great podium it would be. Cam now is coming up, he was expected to be in about third place, which would really be, you know, roundabout... Um, you know where it would be but it looks as if it could be a little bit better than that finishing very well coming up to the finishing line Leonard Kemna on a finish to the course that will suit him up the hill just missing out on the lead 2.6 seconds down on Derek G it's a good ride for Leonard Kemna ouch yeah it's a brutal finish, absolutely brutal finish. So Josh Tarling came here, he said that he wanted to win. Still in with a chance. You know, I thought 
definitely top ten, hopefully top six, but he could be pulling something out the back here. And, um, you know, a medal's now possible. This is another medal contender, Evney Paul. Rainbow jersey last year on the road. And he's given up those stripes. Of course, he's going to have the Belgian Champions jersey to wear in its place now for the next year. Be hoping he'll have a red jersey by mid-September again. Will he have a rainbow jersey in the time trial? We'll find out in the next half an hour. Current standings at the first check. This cannot change now, by the way. Everybody's been through here. Ganna just under five seconds ahead of Evenepoel. Tarling at 6.7 seconds. Cavagna with a good start when you compare it to everybody else. As Biel as well in the game. Look at that outside the top ten, Wat van Aert. Cantanio putting in a good ride, as is Asker, if you look at that. And Jay Vine, who started the year being the top man at the Aussie Championships. Here he is now in August. And Filippo Ganna is going to catch him with 23.2 Ks to go. Halfway around the course. Yeah, I think this is us heading out. It's the same road we started on. Um, we head out towards, um, you know, Kippen's up to the, the left-hand side, so we're going to go do, you know, the first of the um, the climbs in the way back. Brandon McNulty at the second check. It's still nobody able to get anywhere near Josh Tarling, but somebody getting closer. Brandon McNulty at 46.6 seconds. The American whizzing round the corner. Into the wind again, and off to the castle, as Ganna has now passed Vine. We saw an American there, you're going to see another American here, and he's going to be the new leader. Lawson Craddock. Hasn't been the top time setter at any of the time checks yet. But he's got a real opportunity here to move into the hot seat, at least for now. 150 metres to go. He should do this, Brian. Yeah, he, he's expected to, to lead. You know, that was at the bottom of the climb with the time checks. Great crowd at the bottom of the climb. I hope we get to see that. But looks like Lawson Craddock uh, of the American team. It's everybody's just spinning up here. There's not a lot you can do. You're, you're empty and you have to get over the line. And it's just everybody's an auction dead. And going up to set the fastest time is uh, the American Lawson Craddock by some margin. 21.3 seconds quicker than Derek G. It's all about the North Americans, one and two, USA, Canada at the minute. I can tell you there's a former world champion on the hunt, though, for at least a temporary place on the hot seat, because Rowan Dennis has just set the fastest time at the third intermediate check. After 50 minutes of racing, 10 seconds quicker than Nelson Oliveira. And in front of Craddock, well, 49 seconds quicker. Yeah, this is this um, left-hand turn now, but this is some of the course we haven't seen. Uh, this is where we start kind of dragging up to towards the uh, the town of Kippen. If you go further on here, it kind of drags up a little bit, takes you to Arm Prior and uh, Baclavy over to Ballot Toll, but we're turning left here. This looks as if this is uh, Josh Talling on this uh, part of the climb, which looks as like, like they've uh, resurfaced. Oh, this is the actually the climb up to uh, Camus Barren. So this is the last climb for Josh Talling. You know, he is expected that to finish uh, with the fastest time. Um, you can just see what he's going to set quicker than uh, Rowan Dennis, which is a considerable margin to a double uh, world champion. So you just get that kind of incline at the top, and then it's uh, downhill and then uphill to the castle. Nelson Oliveira making sure that Lawson Craddock might not have too much time to park his backside on the hot seat. Got to get over the line in a minute and 12 from here. The way he's riding, he should do this. Yeah, I think he will. Um, you know, he set some good times on the way to the finish. The Portuguese rider, very slight rider, went out really, really quickly, and um, he's going to set the fastest time by, you know, a good considerable amount, probably about 30 seconds. He's going to finish really, really well here.
News from the third intermediate check. Josh Tarling is through it. 54 seconds quicker than Rowan Dennis. The man who just crossed the line there, Oliveira, a minute and five seconds quicker. So Tarling, the Welshman, still flying. And he is going to set a time that is going to really take some beating. That is as long as he deals with that nasty climb to the finish. I think Josh Tarling will finish it. He'll, he'll find it difficult coming up here into the, the castle, but he will set the fastest time. It's, he will go into the hot seat, but, you know, he'll be looking at his his trade teammate, Philip Agan, out there, Evney Paul. I think they'll be the challengers uh, for him, but this is turning out to be an absolutely epic day for um, Josh Tarling. 19 years of age. He's yet to make his way onto that provisional standing at the finish currently led by Portugal and Nelson Oliveira 44 seconds quicker than Lawson Craddock a minute and five in front of Derek G and that's some ride from a man who well three or four years ago maybe five years ago would have been touting as possible podium finisher Oliveira certainly a top five top ten man today's put in a really good setting Evenepoel is on his way to the second check after 35 kilometres of racing. Not quite there yet, still got 21 kilometres of the 47.8 to go. He's just turned us that Thomas in front of him. Yeah, get that it, will be this is his Thomas in front of him. Mm. Yeah, this is his drag up to Kippen. If you get to Kippen and went right, you go over the top of the world and then down into Crow Road, but... Now, what does that mean? Stop encouraging me. He's, he wants to ride his own race. Every Paul knows what he has to do, and he's probably getting shouted in the ear. And he, you got to remember, this is a country team instead of a trade team. He doesn't want the constant chatter. You're looking at Bruno Almirail. Solid rider from France, he's been national champion. Today is not going to be a result. With too much to write home about in the papers tomorrow. Sixth place provisionally. Solid enough from Armi Reip. Just to let you know, at the uh, Canvas Baron checkpoint, um, inside the last few kilometres, Josh Tarling still uh, was fastest at that point, 50. But um, Walt Van Aert was a minute behind him. He's not going to make up a minute in the last few kilometres, especially up to this climb. Not the day for Wart van Aert, then. We can probably confirm that by now. Yeah, it looks that way. Um, you know, 30 odd seconds down at the first checkpoint, not coming back at all. And at the last checkpoint, definitely uh, over a minute down, you're not going to make that time up. Kesper Askren is going to be over half a minute down on Nelson Oliveira, who seems to have paced his effort beautifully because Askren was very, very quick at the start, wasn't he? Oliveira up there and in the lead at the minute. And we're waiting for news from the second intermediate check where Tarling still leads. Dennis is on his way to the finish. Oh, no, no, no. Not in your last appearance at the Worlds. This is where you feel for him because he was on his way to taking the lead. Oh, Rowan Dennis. And he's going to have to fight for it. He was well ahead of Oliveira. The time check was there. Some sort of incident, a mechanical is going to cost him. He's going to be close. He's going to have to go to the podium. But it's not to sit in the hot seat. The two-time world champion with a mechanical in the final kilometre of his world's time trial career. Well, that definitely cost him, didn't it? But Josh Tarling is flying behind him, so in the next couple of minutes, Josh Tarling is going to finish with the fastest time, so I don't think he would have even got to the hot seat, but Catania was expected as well uh, for Italy, and he's looking to set about the fourth fastest time, but I think... Go away. Oh, the anger. Understandable, that. This is Catania, but just look behind, concentrate on this man because he could be set in history today. A 19-year-old winning the World Junior Champion and then finishing in the podium. One, you know, whether it would be bronze um, or silver, we don't know yet, but uh, an incredible performance from uh, Josh Talling.
He'll be dreaming of gold, depending on what he's done towards the end. Now, the youngest rider ever to win this was 20 years ago. 23-year-old Mick Rogers, who is behind the podium today. This is Josh Tarling, 19 years of age from Wales. He's the national champion of Great Britain. He's among the world best here. A minute and 19 to get over to beat Nelson Oliveira. Catania comes across in front of him, but it's every second that counts where the podium's concerned. Josh Tarling has ridden like a dream today. A brand new star among the seniors, bangs his fist on the table and is here among the big boys. A minute and four quicker, Josh Tarling turns up at home, brings the performance of his life. And for now, it's up to the others to remove him. Because as it stands, he's the leader in the World Championship. And he could well make history as the youngest ever winner. That is a sensational bike ride, Brian. Yep, definitely. In the home championships, sensational ride, as you as you say. Setting the fastest time throughout, pretty much. And, um, you know, setting the benchmark. I think there's only a couple of riders out there that uh, can beat this young man. And, you know, I thought it was quite bold that, you know, British Championships, he came back and, and said that I feel at an advantage. I'm not going to ride under 23s. I'm going to straight into the elite and smashed it even there. The Welshman on top of the pile. And if you'd imagine me talking about a Welshman on top of the pile at the start of the day, most of you would have been thinking about Geraint Thomas. But no. I'm talking about the man who last year was the junior world champion, 19-year-old Josh Tarling. Here's Wat van Aert, who certainly left something in it for the last climb. But has he given himself too much to do? The answer is yes. Van Aert is looking good. In fact, he's flying up this hill quicker than anybody I think we've seen so far. But, Brian, he was already way behind. And this is not the performance we expected today from a man who was many people's favourite. Yeah, mine included. Um, you know, from the first time check, he was, what, 30-odd seconds down. He's not that far away. He's going to finish probably over 40 seconds down, finishing pretty well. But I think way out, outside his, his best. Just looking at um, the second checkpoint, and believe me, there's still people out there in the course. As you see, Wilt Van Aert just going to come up to the line and finish just... 49 seconds down, Sale in second place. He made up, what, 11 seconds or thereabouts um, from the top of the canvas bar and last checkpoint to the finish line. So he did finish a lot quicker than um, Josh Tarling, but I think he'd be very disappointed at this moment. But coming up to the second checkpoint, it does look as if um, we are waiting and expecting uh, Ghana to go into first, and he has. He He's has. just going into first at 39.34. Uh, 13 seconds quicker than Josh Tarling. Of course, with the way it finishes up that hill, if that's the difference there, then things can change. Yep, definitely. It's um, 10, 15 seconds on that climb. I think from that last checkpoint, uh, this man made up uh, about 11 seconds. So still in the balance, still waiting for Evne Paul to come across at that moment in time. But for the moment, Britain are leading. Here is Filippo Ganna coming up to that checkpoint, and there's confirmation of what he just did a moment ago. 13 seconds quicker than Tarling, 52.6 kilometres per hour, and a man looking for a hat trick. So, quick shot of Mick Rogers at the finish there. If Ganna can take the win today, he'll equal him on three world titles in the time trial. Belgium hopes now rest on the shoulders of Remco Evenepoel. Yeah, it looks as if Gann has actually um, passed. Um, oh, no, he hasn't. Evne Paul, I don't know if he's passed um, Geraint Thomas for the moment. That'll be a good carrot for him. But for me, I said it not too long ago, it looks as if Tarling, Evne Paul and Ghana could be our podium. But in which uh, order? That's the question. And here is Gann as it starts to go uphill. Still 11.8 kilometres to rise. And most of the climbing, the 350 odd metres, is done now in this final part. Yeah, this is the climb at Gurgunuk. Um, so you go over here, it's a, just a power climb, it's nothing to worry about. You know, these guys are riding big gears. OK, he's halfway up the block at the moment. The last climb uh, will be the, the key uh, one at um, Canvas Barren. 
It's been a day to forget for Stefan Bissiger. I'm sure he was expecting better than this today. Eighth place provisionally, almost two minutes down on Josh Tarling. And again, you're talking about the reigning European champion. News from the next time check, and here it is. If you're a Belgian supporter, don't be too despondent yet. Because it's Remco to the rescue. Fastest time, and yeah. his part of the course is still to come. Remco Evenepoel losing the rainbow bands last Sunday on the road might be about to take them in the time trial. Well, it's looking that way, isn't it, Rob? You know, he's, he's getting faster and faster. Never started as fast as some. Gan, I'll get that in his ear as well. So, you know, I still think that the top three, Evany Paul, Ghana and Josh Talling, but in what area? What's this man got left? He's on this kind of slight kind of descent, I say just gradual descent onto the main road again. He'll turn right and then he'll go up to Canvas Barren. And it's up that finishing climb, hey, Rob. That's going to make the difference. Warren's call just finishing 136 down. Sir Varna showed the future. He looks rather space age with that thing on his head. Oh, and that's hurt. But again, it, it's that sort of effort, isn't it? The time trial. You're not doing it right, I guess, unless you're like that. It's so difficult to pace, Rob, especially with this steep climb towards the end. Um, every rider's finishing absolutely on their hands and knees, and you know that's the way it should be. But it's just that pace, and how much can you afford to to hang back on? You know, this this championship, very similar to the under 23, could be could be over, you know, seconds. Brandon McNulty, time's still green, but he's got distance still yet to cover. Josh Starling's lead not under threat by him. Just going back very quickly before we go to McNulty across the finish line, we saw Evenepoel across the line there to set the second best, sorry, best time at the second check. 25 seconds in front of Tarling. We saw the distance to Ghana, but 25 seconds in front of Tarling. And what's to come will suit, you imagine, Remco Evenepoel more. I think Remco Evenepoel is on his way to becoming world champion. One of the rights for the day has to be Josh Tarling. Um, I even think that he could actually hold on to silver medal here. I think Ghana is the one that um, seems to be maybe kind of losing that little bit. We're just seeing uh, Brandon McNulty, former double champion at this at a, a younger level, just finishing seconds, 38 seconds down. So definitely looks as if uh, Josh Tarling uh, is going to be getting a, a medal, but what colour is it going to be? Incredible when you think about it. You know, he came here to win and Many would have looked at, at as what you came here to win, you know, in your, your first, you know, elite world champion against some of these big riders. I know he's he was that close to in Wallony to Ghana, but this is going to be an incredible day for Josh Tarling on the hot seat for the moment. And there he is on the right hand side. And if you watch the classics, you watch the early season racing. You'll have seen this man take to the pro level like a duck to water. Today's really announced himself on the world stage. Stefan Kung time. And he's not bringing that back, is he? From intermediate to 139.87. Another world is going to go by for Stefan Kung. Yeah, race too far, I think. Um... World champion already in the mixed team, really. So he'll take that and good performance in the road race. But this is the man that's flying out in the course now. He himself is kind of heading back. This is the, the, the kind of main road that they finish in. But they kind of dive up to the uh, the right hand side, up to Camus Barron. And I'm pretty sure that, um, you know, Ghana isn't too far away from that point. So hopefully we'll get him uh, picked up in that last uh, checkpoint. But I think this is the man who's fastest in the course. Looks as if he will be, you know, the new champion, last year's champion, well out of it again. So, incredible when you think about it. I say it again, Josh Tarling, I thought it would be maybe top six, but to get a medal, incredible uh, today. And it's, he's almost going to guarantee the medal now.
Well, the way the time checks are going, it's looking very good for a podium place for Josh Tarling. These are the standings at second intermediate. Evenepoel, Ganna, Tarling. And that's with everybody through it now. And look at the gap from the podium to the rest, Brian. Yeah, you can see that happening even after the first one, Rob. There's a matter of seconds. That's why I said it early. You know, Evenepoel, Ganna, Tarling could be our, our you know, medalists and... You know, you think Evany Paul, you think of Ghana, um, Walt Van Aert being disappointing, maybe Kung a little bit, but this is the man fastest in the course, but you have to say that Josh Tarling, absolutely incredible today. With Josh Tarling in the lead in the clubhouse at the moment, Brian, I said when he crossed the line, he'd be the youngest ever winner of the world elite time trial for the men. If this man crosses the line ahead of him, He'll also be the youngest ever winner. And he's got 15 seconds on Ganna right now. And Ganna is on his way to catching Pogacar. Yeah, I don't think Pogacar would have uh, wanted this, but, you know, he was kind of laughing and joking at the, at the start, enjoying himself. So, even if right-hand turn, he's heading up the, the same climb, the same kind of drag. You can just see it kind of drags up, swings over to kind of the left-hand side, but Ganna's going to pass Pogacar like a train here up towards the uh, the last checkpoint. Uh, Evany Paul was just kind of starting that same part of the road. Look at the gap, though, on this section. Ganna, just while we've had this graphic up, Brian, has made up three or four seconds. This is not a done deal. We've got a big fight on our hands for the world title. That's what we wanted, didn't it? So, Ganna and Evany Paul, um, Josh Tarling, I think, guaranteed a medal for the moment. But what way is this going to go? And I think... Evany Paul's looking a little bit faster. Uh, I think uh, Ghana's fighting a little bit. Uh, he will be encouraged by, you know, passing uh, Pogacar, but has Ghana got what it takes to go up this uh, very steep finish uh, into Sterling? Has he paced it correctly? 11 seconds between them. Evany Paul, at the moment, the quickest. And if you were switching on and wondering if you were watching the same right sport, yes, you were. This happened a moment ago. Filippo Ganna passing Tadej Pogacar and a reminder that Pogacar started two minutes and 40 seconds in front of Ganna. Oh, he's really pushing out now. This is the top, this is the last uh, time check and it's going to be, you know, oh, this is Cameron Barras now, 27 seconds. So, wow. definitely between Evany Paul and Ganna. This is, and this is a, this is a dream for, you know, the organisers. Ghana and Evany Paul out in the course. It's going to be who's going to be fastest up this final climb into uh, Stirling Castle. Who is going to be the king of the castle today? It has been a who's who as far as the start sheet's concerned. A lot of the big-name riders were simply not watching here because they're out of the game in terms of the time. We saw Pogaccio only because he'd been passed by Ghana. Thomas, of course, out there too. He was in front of Evany Paul. But even the pool is flying. Jay Vine gone through that third check in 11th place. Only Thomas, even the pool, Kung and Foss to pass that third check now. And at the finish line, the leader is Josh Tarling, the 19-year-old from Wales. Remco even it's been around forever, hasn't he, already? Or at least it seems. Already a world champion on the road. A Grand Tour winner. A two-time monument winner. But if he holds the 11-second gap he has over Filippo Ganna, <laughs> as Pogaccia comes back, as always there to entertain us, yeah. whatever he's doing, even when he's no chance of taking the win here. But just to finish the point, Remco Evenepoel, who seems to have been around forever, if he carries this through will be the youngest ever world time trial champion among the men elite. Well, I think it's looking that way. Uh, unless anything happens, it's looking that way out in the course. But, you know, everybody loves Pogaccio. He'll never give up. Never give up. And in fact, he might race him up the, the climb at the end. Ghana just has to remain focused, and I'm pretty sure he will. Um, but, you know, Evany Paul is going to possibly set the fastest time at the last checkpoint. What's Ghana got left? But Josh Tarling, again, brilliant, absolutely brilliant today. Going to take a medal in his first elite championship. Tarling, the leader. 
Even the fast Remy Cavagna at over two minutes, 22 down. That should be Biel, seventh place. Good ride from him. Oh, listen to that, he is hurting. And again, we can sit here in the very comfortable commentary box and dismiss the times and say, well, that's, you know, not going to be in it for a win, but just look at what every single rider leaves out on the road. Well, I've ridden up this climb in a prologue, um, but and that was hard enough, not without doing um, almost 50 kilometres beforehand. Miguel Biao has left it all out on that climb. Well, you're in the top ten. Robert the Bruce statue. Yeah, there's been a, a few Scotsman. battles in this area. And we've definitely got a battle on today. It's still in the balance, you know, between gold and silver. Both of them, um, you know, fighting for it. But I think Evany Paul was edging it. And he is. He's fastest at the, the last checkpoint, uh, 49.22. We just missed that one. 10.6 seconds quicker. And here's the proof. So, Evna Paul at 49, 49, 22, 43. And the man who is 10 seconds slower than him is now heading into the final 1,000 metres. And this is a crucial, crucial kilometre now for the destination of the rainbow jersey. Because Filippo Ganna needs to find 10 seconds from somewhere. And he has to hope that Evna Paul hasn't got enough left in the tank to put even more time into him. This climb up to the castle is between ten, can make a difference between 10 and 15 seconds, so it's still in the balance. Evnipol seems to be the fastest, but Ghana will fight all the way to the finishing line. This is not a done deal for the moment, so let's see. You know, Belgium are disappointed in under 23. Can they pull on the rainbow bands? It does look likely, but Ghana, as we know, will fight. Well, Gacha here on the hill, but all the attention deserves to be higher up at this time. For once, it's not this man we're concentrating on in the climb. It's Filippo Ganna, a two-time world champion in the elite men's time trial, hoping for the hat-trick. He missed out last year. Tobias Foss taking the jersey off him. He is going to be the new leader. Josh Tarling with his 56.07.43. And Filippo Ganna with a minute and 24 to get over the line from here. He has to work for every single second. He's on that big one by, so he's got nothing but the big ring up here. It's worked for him with the time split so far. 200 metres to go, 12%. 1.03 and the time is ticking. Remember, even Paul coming up behind. Ganna on his way to take the hot seat, but is it going to be enough to take the world title? It'll be set whatever time he can, then wait and see. Young Josh Tarling, 19 years of age, is going to end up on the podium. It's going to be an historic medal for a teenager at the senior men's worlds. But Filippo Ganna, looking to take back the rainbow band, sets his time, and it's a 55, 31, 51. They're the digits, they're the numbers. That's what Remco Evenepoel has to focus on as he now takes his own climb to the castle at Stirling. A brilliant ride by Ganna, but Brian, is it going to be good enough? Yeah, we'll have to wait and see. We won't have to wait too long, but I tell you what, Ganna, I'll say he's never suffered so much in his life in that last two minutes there. Ganna to recover from the effort. He'll be looking up at a big screen somewhere if he can. It's Ganna in gold, Tarling in silver. McNulty on the quiet has produced a really good ride for third place. But it's Evenepoel now, who's on the hill, cobbles rattling beneath him, who we need to watch. Josh Tarling is going to take a bronze medal today. And what's it going to be for Remco Evenepoel? 500 metres to the line. 53.55, he's got a minute and a half here. The time is ticking down, and Avnipol must conserve it to the end. He had 10 seconds at the last time check. 
He's got a matter of around 300 metres or so to go here. Turns up the hill. They roar him on in Scotland. The big screen on the left-hand side, but full focus on the power and on the road in front. It is by no means a done deal. And Evenepoel must find something. He's got a minute to get over from here. Listen to this. It's been 20 years since a 23-year-old won this from Mick Rogers in 2003. And with 200 metres still to arrive, Remco Evenepoel has to give everything if he's to make history and become the youngest rider ever to win the time trial. Around the corner, they bang on the boards. The finish line's up ahead. 32 seconds and counting. The metres tick away. The pedal strokes go. Is it going to be the end of the day in rainbows for Remco? The road race last year. Is it going to be the time trial this year? The youngest winner ever, 17 seconds. It continues to tick down and Remco Evenepoel will do it. History is made. Road race in 2022, time trial this time out. And in Bonnie, Scotland, it's twice as nice for Remco Remco. A sensational ride. It's not the Belgian we thought might win today. Wat van Aert off. But Remco Evenepoel very much on it. And even with four riders still to finish, Remco Evenepoel is the brand new world time trial champion. Geraint Thomas coming to the line. He's going to finish two minutes down on the man he calls a little so-and-so. He's off to the welter. They'll be facing off in GC terms there. Here at Sterling. Remco Evenepoel now has another world title. This time, Brian, he's beaten the clock, he's beaten the hill, he's beaten everybody else. Well, like you say, you know, we were thinking about Walt Van Aert, um, and he was blown away with this man here, and I think everybody else. Ghana put on a tremendous fight, but, you know, even just walking about at the finish, even as he comes across the line at the finishing line, he just seems so in control, and, um, you know, nothing... Nothing surprises from um, Ebony Paul. You know, that's what it means to the Belgian team. They get second in the men's under 23, but wow. I know there's still a couple of riders to finish, but 12 seconds it was. Great ride by Josh Tarling in third place there. But um, just look at the time gaps to the rest of the field. Remco Evenepoel, 12 seconds quicker. Filippo Ganna beaten for the second year running. Wat van Aert off to congratulate his teammate. And Stefan Kung is going to have to wait for another year. Oh, it's been a long way off being his day. I'm just disappointed uh, we never got to see as much of this finish in the past because look at the crowd that's here. The atmosphere, I was told I've got a lot of friends here, was electric and it's been here all day. But just in the last few moments here, we're starting to see more and more of this kind of finishing crowd. Incredible sights that, and I tell you what, the, the fans and, you know, the people from Stirling area and around Glasgow, you know, Glen Tress, Fort William, you know, everybody that has been, even in the stadium and in the velodrome, the atmosphere in Scotland is, is fantastic at the moment. So, so well done everybody that's gone and, and watched these championships. And they're not over yet, of course. But just incredible scenes here, um, up here to the to the castle in Stirling. When I first found out that this was going to be the finish of the time trial, I just thought, what a fantastic setting. And it is. It's been quite the show today. Perhaps not as close with as many stars being as close to the big numbers, but those who've gone fast have gone really fast. And history is the youngest ever winner for Remco Evenepoel. The youngest ever man on the podium for Josh Tarling. And Filippo Ganna, who was so close to a third title. Well, I tell you what, Evenepoel, and I said it at the time during the race, that was, he was just missing that little bit in the road race. He was missing nothing today. Ganna came here totally focused on winning. 
taking that um, time trial crown. Everything, all the detail. You know, Evany Paul's won it, but the man of the day, and dare I say it, man, <laughs> Josh Darling, that has just kind of blown me away. You know, I know he's a great talent and I know what he's done, but to do it in this stage, his first attempt at it at that age, that's just incredible and, and well done to him and, and obviously his family. Tobias Foss, defending champion. Hasn't been near on the time splits today. It was a great result last year, wasn't it? He's had a 2023 to forget so far. But Tobias Foss going to finish just over two minutes down. Because for a second year running, albeit in a different discipline, it's all about Rainbow Renko. Evenepoel has beaten the rest. And Remco Evenepoel is the youngest ever world time trial champion for the men. The passing of the title from the man on your screen to the man from Belgium. And after the effort, it all comes back into focus again. Last year's world champ, Tobias Foss waves goodbye to the rainbow bands because the next act, waiting in the wings, about to move on to the podium. In the next half hour, at least, will be Rempo Evenepoel. Remco Evenepoel becomes the youngest ever world time trial champion for the men elite. Just about taking the record from Mick Rogers 20 years ago. The 23-year-old beats Filippo Ganna by 12 seconds. And another big headline. At home, Josh Tarling becomes the only ever teenager to finish on the podium. 48.2 seconds down. 